Hello everyone and welcome to our first session of Newton's and Mastermind, third edition. And this session is actually a continuation of our previous adventure in modern D20, where the heroes were actually captured by an unknown organization that calls itself the Agency. That is what the players actually know should they actually play the session. But in that story, Walter Cross, Presidia Lin, and Michael Wester was captured by this organization to actually unlock their hidden potential abilities under the direct command and the direct instructions from Derek Cole. It seems that during the further investigation by Michael, Drake, and Walter Press, and the others, they found out that Trevor Klaus and Derek Cole had some sort of a falling out. And during that event, Michael act watch that actually held his hidden anger was actually released. And when that happened, during that time, when the watch was removed, a mysterious magical ring, or people actually call it mysterious or mystical, but nobody knows that it's actually galactical. It never crossed to anybody's mind when both green and red ring stumbled went into Michael's middle finger and to unleash an unknown entity that people call as either the green or red. But to Michael Lesker, he refers to himself as the new Red Lantern. But if it was not for Draken during that time, also known as Shadow, making sure that he actually sneaked into the base, he actually unlocked a lot of information about Derek Cole in particular, and also to Trevor Klaus. That's when Drake, the new reform Michael, Anthony, and Walter Kress went to actually save Trevor deep within the compounds of the agency. And then during that moment itself, Michael also fought with Derek Cole and during that battle itself, during the many destructions within from the hidden base all the way straight to Night City and the other mega cities that seem to have killed a certain amount of people. The number of casualties was unknown during that time. All right, Michael, please roll a 10 D 10 times 10. I hope you're happy. That's the number of people you've killed. Good. Reported in the news by... Reported in the news by the Daily Bugle and so the Daily Planet. The number of casualties that was actually reported was around 500 people. The 500 deaths reported. It was not much to some, but the cat catastrophe itself was more than enough for people to actually refer it as the crisis caused by this somehow superhuman which Michael Wesker actually wrote and then destroyed in this disease itself. And during that time, other or other meta humans somehow appeared. A blue streak of lightning, or perhaps a blue streak, people call it, or a rush of blue but nobody knows who it was because it was just too fast shadow during that time working together with walter tried to actually help the rest of the people that was actually caught in the crossfire between the neo red lantern this blue entity that was actually busy saving those that was about to be crushed under all the throne of greedo and the cars or even other debris. And other unknown superheroes more appear 
but it was during this time that after during this aftermath, Bob Michael actually decided to tell himself to actually not to actually reveal his power, but to actually work together with the rest of his companions, the rest of his friends, known as the Shadow, Walter, and Quest. And during this time, while the fight was still ongoing, the Shadow and Walter also saved other meta humans and other subjects which have not released their potential yet. And it was here that Shadow actually met an old man that seems to really appreciate what Draken had done. And also during that time, Draken also saved two other women, young girls, that was actually not far from this old man, apparently Oriental. Draken actually knows him sooner or later to be Tadashi Madarami, which actually owns some sort of hotel in the Megamite city, together with the other two girls, which have, which their families was actually murdered and killed for the experimentation itself at the agency. However, because of Draken, they actually submitted and also they agreed to actually help him in his crusade against the darkness and the evil, even though Drake actually disguised himself now with a special watch designed by Tadashi and the two girls. And Drake can actually know one of them as Tsugiyama Jun and also Toma Teruko, which are quite good in their arts, but even and somehow also Walter during that time together with Drake helped the other non better humans they were actually caught in the crossfire while Wesker was busy fighting Walter found an old man that actually gave him a key to some sort of warehouse hidden within the compounds of the mega city itself and then he actually urged him to actually continue the fight and to actually and to actually continue what the man couldn't do. The old man didn't say much to Walter before he died, crushed under the rocks and debris and of course of the explosion caused by Wesker and also Derek Paul. But when Walter actually saved the old man, he never knew that that old man last initial was stuck. But Walter got keys and also the card only specifically tied to his biometrics they are actually going to the base system and this is when Walter seek the assistance of Kikaido 01 and also Roach to help him to actually construct the place after the destruction was over but after that during the ensuring destruction Michael made sure that Harry Cole did not return and sent him straight perhaps the moon or to the space using all his will and all his rage to push Harry Cole further. But what was Michael Wesker did was just to actually ensure that Harry Cole doesn't return. But Harry Cole eventually staying buried within the moon zone finds itself. And After all the chaos actually ended. Okay, someone please roll a 1d12. 1d12 plus 2. Okay, Draco and Michael. Okay, 6, 7, 2. Okay, alright. Are you guys going to take the 6 months or 9 months? Uh... I would say nine months, but that's for me. What do you guys think? Mm. <clears throat> I don't mind uh, leaving it to the dice to the to the to the dice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, let's let's roll. Let's roll D four. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, okay. Yeah, one D four. One two. We take the five. Uh, three and four. Yeah. Nine months. Yeah, we uh, we take the five then. Mm -hmm. So we we'll take the six. Uh, yeah. six months. It yeah. should be rolling a 1d6, not a 1d4. Okay, well, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 should be the 6. Yeah, 4, 5, yeah, 6 okay. should be the 9. I'll, I'll, roll, yeah, but... I'll, roll, I'll roll the d6, so yeah. 
All right, all right, all right. Three, two, one, and go. Four. Four. Oh, uh, that'll be the nine. That'll be the nine months. Yeah, nine, nine months, months. Nine months. All right. After the after the events of Crisis, nine months have passed. Draken was actually busy, actually trying to rearrange his life, even with the help of Tadashi Manorame and his two adopted sister, which is Sugiwa Jun and Tomataruko. But during this time, Draken, during that first or two months or two, third months after that, you actually said goodbye to your Baku gang. They actually told you that they would actually leave the Mega Knight City and head straight towards Emerald City and right further north from the city where the destruction was left behind. Part of the city was actually completely destroyed and is now in ruins, but still under construction from the authorities itself. And during that time, after the nine month break, you decided to actually choose to actually find a job. But during that first two months, you actually tried to either got the job as either a reporter or a police officer. Because as somebody that actually protects the city, you were told that Megazine City needs protectors, but not superheroes, not heroes that that are known by the people you think that you work in the shadows. You have always have been. You are not part of this world. You were sent here. You were banished here from another place in time. As an elf, you have seen events that others could not due to their age. But because of the special watch that you wear, you are able to actually cast an illusion to others that sees you as human. But those that are close to you knows that you are not. And during that time, Draken, yeah. you, you were approached by Tadashi Madarame. The man, even in a serious look, you saved him from the debris and the destruction at one of the compounds of the agency. If you guys were to actually play that session, it would most likely take a month to finish alone. Yes. And Tadashi Madarame looks at you in the morning. He bows. He says, Good morning, Draken san. I hope that your rest has been a good one. And uh, as you know, that uh, your this is sister, June, and Teruko is busy at uh, you know where, but uh, we are still waiting for more customers. Our cafe in our hotel is still trying to recover from the destruction of crisis. Uh, if not because of your friend, Michael, things would have been much, much, much more difficult. And uh, I hope that you have secure a job taken. I hear that, you're, that you actually passed in the police academy. And uh, you are supposed to be taking the the position of being a detective, no? Or, or do you, well, the position will still be open for you if you want to take it. My friend is willing to actually offer you the position. They are still short of men. But if you want to, you know, be a person that takes photographs, well, that's where the action is. What well, that is your choice. Uh, okay. As soon as as uh, as I hear the name Michael, I rub the the bridge between my eyes because he couldn't stop hearing that name over and over again every single day for nine for nine months straight. Michael this, <laughs> yes. Michael that, Michael this, Michael that. And yes. This really annoyed him to the point that that he always think about the goody two shoes. <laughs> yes, yes. You have known Michael for quite some time. You've known him during the time since more than twenty. You've known him until now, and it's been it's been uh, during that time. It was known as zero year. Now it's your year one. So consider this as your year one comic book series. Yeah, so he did, after rubbing his wrist, like uh, you know, you know, man, 
I think it's better for me to just stick with the action. Uh, God, I really need to. I really need to go for that. The police, police academy shit. Uh. As you were busy talking to Tadashi, you notice a man with a cane walking slowly towards you. Uh, Draken. You know, you see Russell Barnaby. You may need to take notes for this one. Okay, this is Tadashi Madarame. This is Russell Barnaby. But oh, okay. just to tell you, I, in, I don't just, think I don't think I have any notes notes in the, in the in my character sheet. Mm, let me see. This is my first time to see whether there is notes in your character sheet. Uh, let me go to your stats and skills. Uh, there is. Uh, no... Oh, yeah, 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 there is. Notes yeah, and notes, yeah. notes and conditions. Okay. All right. Just a simple note. Okay. Tarashi Madarame is your caretaker. Should you fall in injuries, he's considered your Alfred. Okay, yeah. But uh, not your butler. He takes okay. care of you. And if you ever fall or in distress, if you fight another super metal human that can actually take you down with a punch, yeah, he'll be there if you need help. And Russell Barnaby, he actually cleans the place. This is an actual butler. He helps Tadashi Madarami to actually make sure that the hotel and the cafe is well managed. This man makes the best ramen and sushi in Mega Night City. And of course, here, this is your, this is, let me ping you to you. This is your room. Okay. This is the kitchen. This is Tadashi's area of rest. But here, the secret garage and the secret armory, nobody knows this exists because nobody other than yourself knows it exists because it's actually deep underground. This is where Sugiyama Jun actually, actually monitors and repairs your motorcycle, your armor, your gear, and everything else. And Toma Teruko here actually is your equipment more uh, equipment designer or modifiers and stuff. So you may need to put some text here with white in color if you want to write down. Yeah, I am. I'm trying to try, but <laughs> I mm -hmm. have no idea how to how to change the colors. <laughs> I okay. Did, I did like the name though. Yeah, I did put there. I did see there my room. Let me control A, it. control A, and white. Okay, done. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank, thanks. Rich okay, fan. let's put the dragon. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Rich fag. Uh, it's like... not a rich. It's not a rich fag. It's just that he saved them from death. Yeah, and what is so his, his in reward? other what is his reward? A mansion with a butler and a secret underground base. Someone uh, still pays rent. This is know? not a mansion. Not a mansion. This is actually a hotel, a oh, small okay. hotel. Uh, mm -hmm. Alright, uh, uh, let me put it on. Alright, okay. Number twin. And then older to twin. Alright, so who's this older, who's younger? Okay. You're not too sure who is younger or who is older. You never really asked that. But uh -huh. they did tell you that she did actually tell you, so you imagine, did actually tell you that she's actually one year younger than the sister Teruko, so she's actually 18 and Teruko's 19. But Teruko right. and Sugiyama Jun are actually very intelligent because of their mutant abilities. They are quite good in terms of designing things. Toma Teruko, she has a sabbatic arm and also she loves to smoke a lot. Sugiyama Jun, otherwise, she does actually expect and repair the Equipments that you actually have. But for Tarashi Madarame, since he actually owns our hotel, he owes you a lot due to that life debt they had that after the events of crisis. He made sure that everything will be managed by him. Because as long as you are here to protect the people of Mega Night City, then he will be most grateful. Because he told you that he re you remind him of a man that he used to meet a long time ago in Gotham City. What do you want to do, Draken? Uh, he just uh, walks to the kitchen, uh, passing uh, passing by. I uh, I quickly just whip up uh, instant ramen. 
Because it's Ramon, and you're quite good at it. After living for quite some time, Russell Barnaby already told you the best. And he told you that you should actually head over to Madripo if you actually have the free time. But Madripo is one of the most worst slums in, 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 on the planet itself. It's best to be careful. But after you wait up a quick moment and after you have food, Nashi well, may head their normal directions. And then after that, what do you do? Probably take you do, some time you... to uh, explore the area where I am allowed. You are allowed so... everywhere. To, you oh, know. The okay. Okay. So I just walk to the armory first. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, hold on. Uh... You head over to the armory. You see Tomatoroko actually sees you and then after she greets you nicely. And he says, Ah, oh, Becca how can I help you? Of course. I'm trying to figure out some of this gear that we actually managed to obtain from the agency before it collapsed. Thanks to your friend Michael. And I'm sorry if I have to mention the name. Uh, it's because of him that we are safe and also because of you. But it's also because of him that a lot of people died in the city. Which is sad that. But yeah. you notice that you notice that most of your gear is inside here, your armor, your weapons, and everything else. Okay, I just talked to her. I'm going to need to do a quick check on my weapons. You know, okay. same same old routine. So All I right. just go to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, where my weapons are, and do a weapon inspect, inspect uh, action, just check everything. Okay. You do a weapon inspection, you check and everything. You see your bullets, most of your bullets have most of your bullets is either little or non-little. Some of it is actually EMP bullets. Mostly you take down cyborgs or any cybernetic enemies that you may face, or even androids and so on. But other than that, you also see some of your, the bullets, the magical bullets that was actually created by Tadashi himself. You know, to show how Tadashi actually makes this, but you never actually question him. But it's actually very expensive. And actually very, very rare. And mostly only used to actually take down some certain people. But after that was done, you actually check and inspect it really, really fast. It was actually really quick. And then... Uh, so I thought to myself when I hold my sniper rifle and my pistol, damn, I've been using you guys for a year and still work, still works like a charm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. After, so I put, after I put the weapons down, uh, weapons down with some modifications, I just got at uh, Teruko and head, head to the garage. Right. Head over to the garage. Sadly, you couldn't... Sadly, your bike is still there, but this bike is actually your special bike. You only use this to ride at night. But this bike is actually remote operated. It can come to you whenever it's needed. It will detect. But if you're at a rooftop, nope, it cannot go straight to the rooftop. But... You told yourself and you hope one day that you're able to get yourself a jet or a sports car. But first, you just have a bike. So now later, you think to yourself, hmm, maybe I should be like that bad man guy. You think to yourself, jet. I also sigh again and it's like, uh, uh, man, I wish my old, I miss my old bike. Hmm. Yes, your bike was destroyed during crisis. <laughs> and this is the bike that was actually salvaged from the old bike. And this bike has no name yet, though. So you can call it, you can call it, give it a cliche name and call it the Shadow. Or just a bike. Well, I'll, just leave, uh, I'll just leave it nameless and, uh, and uh, just uh, take, uh, take a quick look around. So you're going to actually sees you and then after that, telling you that the bike is actually ready, uh, Draken. And yes. The experimental weapons and parts are actually here. I'm going to take some time to look into it. Uh, the rifles and the FNGs and then many more. But first, I let me look into your bike. Hey, there's something wrong with the tires. There seems to be something wrong with the handling. Well, uh, this bike was actually was actually from the wreckage from Crisis. Hey, that just Wait, I just apologize. Sorry, I couldn't help you for the past nine months to restore it, to store my baby. 
Man. Yeah, if it helps you, well, it's, if not because of you, I would be dead or most likely going against you as a supervillain if my brain was not safe because of you and Walter, of course. Well, I just don't get to hear, I don't want to hear, well, I don't want to hear another, another lick of Michael get, oh god, I just say his, said his name. <laughs> uh. <laughs> June actually just laughs and she giggles and said, yeah, I understand. And this is the reason why we don't watch the news every day. One, one of these days, one of these days, he's gonna have that smug, smug look on his face, wiped, wiped out of this planet, out of this planet. Yes, one of these days, one of these days. But today is not one of those days. And June then asks you, "Well, I'm going to be heading towards the the police precinct and get your badge. You did." Us with flying colors, of course. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, let's just hope I'm not I'm not working under some some asshole who who think who think corruption is everything. So he just walks walks back up to the surface uh, ground floor and prepare prepare to head out to the uh, uh to the precinct after after I pick up my just my handgun or mm-hmm. only my handgun. Mm-hmm. Okay. And after you head over to the prison to look for the handgun. Yeah, so I pick up my handgun first in the armory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a civ- just a common civilian model. And then head out head out uh to the police station to the police station. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you head out to the police station. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, after that, now let's go to uh, Michael, DeAndre. Okay, Michael, not yet. DeAndre, all right, DeAndre. He has been nine months after the events of crisis, DeAndre. He has done everything he could, but after that, he was actually quite pretty quiet. The man that everybody recalled, Derek Cole, was actually dead. All thanks to this mysterious person that calls himself the Lantern. And, I mean, if not because of you, you're not too sure what might happen to actually Mega Night City. Debris, people get almost getting crushed by cars, fallen buildings everywhere. And it seems that this person that calls himself the Red Lantern couldn't even control his powers, correct? All the destruction and all the chaos that was going around it, you were, you were so busy rescuing people, you don't even have the time to even face this person that people refer to as Derek Cole, which was a known terrorist. But Derek Cole, even after the announcement in all the major cities around the world, he, after he, he actually renounced his own name and started calling himself Professor Doom because doctor is so small rank and so cliché. A professor is much better. Professor Doom, he calls himself, you think. Yeah, that's a really lousy name. You really need to choose a better name for such a villainous person. But Professor Doom had died, destroyed, apparently buried by the Red Lantern on the moon, and never to return. And it was during this morning, DeAndre, that you see the singer here, in one of the rooms, looking at you, you've known her for quite some time. She has always record her music in the studio. This is your boss over here, this white boy that actually owns the studio. You actually work for him. This is Ryan Cook. Ryan Cook actually looks into the system and um, everything else. He's always respect to you as a friend, and he's always here for you whenever you're but you never told your secret identity to anyone. And over here is Brian Townsend. He's always looking and then adjusting the music whenever he's around and whenever you're checking. And over here is the cute and beautiful Lin Min May. She's, always, she's an upcoming artist. She always gets angry at you, Deandre, every time you keep on telling her and telling your boss, my Lord Smith, that you have to rush off because you always need to do something. And so many times, 
so many times, DeAndre, that you almost got fired by Milo. But it's because of Lin Min May that you always have your job. And you always stick to your job because of her. But every time she sings, you will adjust the tune and then they release her, trying to release the album. Now here, DeAndre, you notice that your friend or boss, like Arnold Smith, you're in before the door and looking at you and then says, DeAndre, if you don't mind, can you actually look into the recording of Lyndon May? I'm going to be heading out soon because, um, haven't, haven't you heard, DeAndre, that the, the billionaire, Logan Striker, it will be coming over to Mega Night City to reopen and launch a new set of diamonds. Apparently, he found this, this mystical diamond from an unknown tomb somewhere in Egypt. And, uh, I'm going to be heading there to actually see what actually can get. And, uh, but perhaps Lin Min Mei is also invited, actually, uh, for this one. And what you actually done, DeAndre, what you actually done with the recording, people actually dropped her to drop her over to the district to up, and then meet me over at the new opening of the diamond shops. What are you going to do, DeAndre? I would agree him. Yeah, sure. Also, I will I'll send her as, as soon as we're done with this album, yes? Ah, yes. Uh, please don't r- run away like you always do. <laughs> because I want to do your job. And you're the best that we, we, we could find. Yes. I mean, we are the best recording studio in the city. And thanks to that crisis that happened nine months ago, uh, we could actually come back and do our recording further. And perhaps once Lin Mimi actually records her albums and one more, more famous, perhaps we can even get head over towards Emerald City or perhaps make her song somewhere in Metropolis. I'll do my best, boss. I won't let you down. Ah, that's good. Yeah, you don't have to speak very fast, DeAndre. I'm trying to control your speed sometimes. But DeAndre, when you see my Lord Smith up, he talks to you in super slow motion. You're just looking at him like trying and struggling to make sure that every sentence sounds correct to you. Damn it, is that you think to yourself? Damn your powers, you know, to show how you got it after nine months ago or more than that. But you're trying so hard to make a name for yourself after you were a villain. And now you're trying to make your name for yourself as a hero in a city. A place that nobody knows about Blue Rush. And only a small bit of people knows about it. <laughs> and after that, Milo Smith closes the door. And then after that, now leaving you in the room together with Lin Min Mei. And then Lin Min Mei, even though she's young, she looks like a schoolgirl to you. She starts recording and she starts singing. And then you start doing all those things. But after the recording ended, Lin Min Mei then looks at you, DeAndre, and then said, DeAndre, how's my record? How's my voice? How's my record? How's the recording? She asks you. I was doing great. I, I think it's going to be a smasher. <laughs> she laughs and she goes, smash it. That's pretty good. I'm trying to make it big. Uh, but, but my boyfriend, Rick Hunter, doesn't believe that my voice is beautiful. Do you think my voice looks beautiful? She asks you. Roll for... Okay. You can roll for your uh, per- persuasion, if you want to. Or insight. I'm going to take my chances on persuasion. All right. Okay, it's persuasion 17. It's 15. All right. And then you persuade her, and you tell her that the, the, her voice is really quite good. And she said, thank you for that. And she bows. Well... It is going to be quite late, and uh, I think I need to actually prepare myself to head over towards the the new jewelry store that's going to be open at the city. Um, well, Want me to drive you there? Oh uh, yeah. Well, driving is better. Do you actually want to walk? Well, walking is going to be good for our car- for our heart, of course. Uh, sounds like a pain. But Lucy, drive. All right. Ah, yes, we can drive then. Okay, well, you actually get 
your car, even though actually you don't really need it, but you do have a car. And then, while you're actually prepared to actually drive, another person was already driving to another location. Meanwhile, Walter, mm-hmm. you drove your car. Good car. You drove your nice green car. Of right car. here. Ooh, yeah. Yes. And you're going to the old abandoned warehouse. You drove slowly, heading towards there, receiving the information from the old man that died in your hands during the final crisis long the months ago. And Okay, when? can you... Oh, okay, no, no, never mind. I like... Re... Oh, I was gonna reverse the car. It's gonna <laughs> right, be right. so nice. I was gonna like, you know what? Yeah, exactly. Now... Reverse I'm... parking! Yeah, exactly. Reverse parking is my thing here. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Alright. I... You look at the cut. You look at the feathered cut that was actually given to you. It's actually tied and follows your biometrics but it took you eight months to restore this place together with alex roach and also kikaida zero one you clean up the mess you threw out everything you restored everything together with your two companions you made sure that the old abandoned warehouse is an old abandoned warehouse. Nobody comes here, Walter. This place is in ruins. This place was an aftermath of crisis. This place was one of the many fights that happened, but this is one place that the authorities of the mega city don't really look into to repair because sometimes at night, thugs, gangsters hang out here, drug addicts, you name it, everybody's here. But you have come here many times. Those people don't really disturb you much. But when you park your car here, you head towards the abandoned warehouse and you look at the cart. The feathered name at the cart itself is a start. But you head over towards the door with the cart. And as usual, you point the cart at the door and you see a scanner scan you from head to toe. And then you hear a voice, a robotic voice, actually, that speaks out and says, ID number 001, Walter Croft, identify. I just simply, like, uh, look at the card and say, like, flipping it over, well, now, I guess somebody was, you know, owes me an explanation. Too bad you're not here to tell me about it, Mr. Stark. I just say to the robotic voice, Unlock the door for me, please. The door unlocks. It unlocks. There are two multiple locks. Tuk, 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 tuk. Six, actually. And after that, the slow slides open. It doesn't open inward. It doesn't open outward. And then when you then when you see the door, you enter the old warehouse. And then when you head in, you walk in slowly to the warehouse. And then you head towards the fuse box, which is actually a retinal scanner hidden behind it. You take out, you pick inside, you show your left eye or your right eye. Uh, I would say my my right eye. Yeah. All right. You show your right eye, and then after that, the fuse box slowly opens, and then scan your eyes, and then after that, the door behind it open, and then you head inside. I simply, as I as I had, let me just you know do my regular steps, and as I walk, noticing right. the place is all high tech facility and everything, I just simply say, "Well, now, this here looks better than I thought it would be." As I walk, noticing um, Roach, as I approach and say, "What's the status?" As I basically like sit on the chair, looking at all the monitors, just waiting for him to debrief me on what he knows so far. 
Max Roach has always been with you, making sure that this place is secured. This place is operational for nine months. You don't see Gigi, though. You don't see George Rayfield anywhere. He must be with his family, or he must be somewhere doing something else. But Roach then stood there, looking at the monitor screen, and when you head down the staircase, he actually slowly turns and then looks at you. Ah, Walter! And after that, he offers you some donuts on the table. Here, have some. I just take one and say, <clears throat> thank you. So, what's the other clown? Where is he? Josh is probably busy, Josh tells you. Uh, he told me that he's really going out to actually scout around. You know, he is a humanoid robot. He's not human, like you and me. But, yeah. mm -hmm. on the monitor screen, you actually see Earth. You actually see multiple entities around the planet, other meta-humans, and you're actually trying to uh, monitor activities from all these other villains and meta-humans in each major cities around the world, and actually how to counter them should the need arise. You have used this facility for quite some time. There are still so many hidden areas here that you have not even unlocked yet. Due to one, your access level is still too low. And two, it seems that when you use the biometric card and then unlock the computer terminal here, there was actually a holographic projection. This was supposed to be played during the, the crisis session. The holographic projection of Mr. Mr. Stark actually telling you that the projection hologram was supposed to actually say this. If you are watching this and reading this, that means I am now dead. And that only means one thing. And if you're watching this too, that means I have chosen you to be the protectors of the many cities around the world. The hologram actually tells you, you, you actually during that event, you wrote GG. Christian, Michael, and Draken saw the holographic projection. Yeah, time. Everybody remember it during the crisis. Everybody know. Everybody was there. Everybody that was there knew that this actually happened for a reason. And for that nine months, you try to actually see the activities or everything in every way. You know, there's always this muscle-bound person that calls himself Orion. But so far, Orion's been captured and put into the raft. And also other places like other, other villains been put into Stock Island. But Roach is not a superhero. Neither are you. But because of the tech given to you by this man that calls himself Stark, you have actually managed to design and create your own gear to actually help. You have also sent some of those gears to even to Draken to use during his nightly activities, you tell him. Things that is illegal, but since he's working for the police or either as a reporter, I think should be fine, you think to yourself after that. But the mm -hmm. undergraduate projection just tells you, if I'm dead, then you are here watching this. Then you have my blessings to look into all the major events that happen around the world. The team that I used to work for is now no after the world was changed due to a cassette event. Trevor, Trevor Klaus and Derek Cole, the holographic president tells you. Mm -hmm. Cities that was never there emerged. Regions that was never there somehow emerge. People that never existed previously on our planet suddenly reappeared as if multi multiple universes collided into one. The holographic stuff tells you. And I have been trying hard to figure out what actually happened. And before I could continue, that was when so-called agency took me over. Derek Cole didn't want things to be actually found out. And it seemed that Trevor Klaus was... His mind is no longer the same. And if not because of that, 
I would have worked together with Trevor to make sure that they're free. And, and because of that, Trevor actually now dedicated his life to make sure that people like like Derek does not come and interfere anymore or other meta humans does not accidentally destroy the ruling. You know about that. You've seen these holographic projections many times. You see it at a monocle, you know all the detail, every single detail you need to know. But you know Mr. Stark for one, you don't know him personally. You do there are a lot of other Starks in this world. There's one person that calls himself Anthony Stark. Somewhere in New York City that actually is in control of of a company that deals with robotics and cybernetic technology. You have never taken the time to actually fly there to actually talk to this person because this person doesn't know you exist or neither this person actually knows that you actually talk to another staff. But Anthony Stark taking care of this company and this old man Stark giving you permission to use this place as a forward base for you and your companions that have bled together, that have been bruised together. You're just lucky to be alive. But Roach has always been here. He's always here to make sure that everything's being monitored. If he sees anything wrong, he will inform Draken. If he sees anything that Draken couldn't pursue, he will inform Michael. If he sees things that requires a number of certain amount of people that you deal with, he will call in the whole team. But you're just saddened, Walker, that Priscilla Lynn, after the event of crisis, she decided to actually pack her bags mm-hmm. and leave and venture out to the wilderness or the other cities to discover herself, only to return back perhaps one day when needed. So, well, so Priscilla Lynn is considered in this game a female Wolverine, which is different than X-23, of course. So... What do you want to do, Walter? Uh, did I able to do what I did in my in the chat, which is make a copy of the hologram, like the whole thing? Mm, easily done. I basically like uh, crack my fingers and say it's time to locate a few individual and make a few phone calls because we need to start deciding on our next step. I look at Roach and say, uh, Roach, I need you to handle the phone call and make a call to Cressidia. If you cannot locate her using in a regular phone manner, try hacking into a few unused old spy satellites to see if they can scan away at the wilderness. See if you can locate... Or... Roach is not good in technology, FYI. It's oh. you. Roach for technology. Oh, okay. Roach is your... Roche is considered a bodyguard, oh, a person okay. that killed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a technology savvy like you. Okay, you want me to roll for technology, is it? Mm-hmm. Okay, technology. Here we go. First real test. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I did a 32. Going through the computer system. The first person you try to contact is Presidia. When you notice where Christina is, you notice that she is in one of the tallest mountains in the world, climbing up, and did not receive your call. I just basically leave her a pre-recorded message to come back and basically... Oh, okay, wait, wait, perfect message. Uh, I'll type it here in the chat so you can tell me what's... uh, And I will call... The rest, starting first with Draken. So I will type oh. the message to Cressidia, and yeah, you tell me what I need to roll. You tell me what I need, what I need, what I need to roll, and I'll type the message to her. <laughs> okay. Well, you do know that even in rope, even in modern twenty, mm-hmm. Cressidia Chris, don't really. She only have one thing in her mind when it comes to Walter Cross. Hmm. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you Say it. Uh... Oh. Then you send a message to Draken. Uh, okay. Wait. Can I call him actually? 
Well, Drayton is actually busy on his bike. He can actually answer it because it's it's two thousand it's two thousand sixty nine. So, you know, to show how you end up being in 2069, because in 2020, it was 2099. But when you all came back from crisis, when you check the newspaper, it's 2069. But only the few of you know about this event, and others look like it's like a normal everyday Christmas for them. But you people, things have changed drastically. And when you call Draken, Draken, you heard your phone ringing on your helmet when you're actually driving towards the police prison. You notice when you check your helmet, the, the information, your helmet is quite detailed. You can actually see the information, the data, the face of Walter Cross, okay, the details, where he is, his current location and everything on your helmet. Only when he calls, this is specifically designed to you, Michael, Presidia and others, those that will join your team in the future. Okay, and you see what cross calling you. Do you pick up? On, uh, I found the ringtone. Wait, no, mm -hmm. I did not find the ringtone. Anyway, <laughs> I just pick it up. What? And, and you should hear, and you hear the sound of a V four, a whirling V four engine in the background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see Walter Cross like plays a simple voice recorder. I'm calling from De I'm calling from Telecom Sir. Would you like to buy a a special offer in our upcoming uh, free package called Sir? It includes a free installation to your internet as well as DVD. Uh, Drake knows it's you, so you you know yeah, so you, yeah. you know you, you know I, I, I just yeah. So it did it just just says voice voice uh, voice only on your end. Mm -hmm. So you just you, so I just press my face my face my face into a sour sour look. It's like cut cut the bullshit, Walt. Cut the bullshit, Cross. What do you want? Go man, go man. I had to you know play that with you. Anyway, you're free to come to you know to the abandoned warehouse. I got something that you and the rest of the clowns need to see here and decide. Looks like somebody decided to you know dump a very huge load of crap into our face before they died and i kind of regret... ah, 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 ah. no 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 hell no like almost last year almost nine more than nine months ago i agreed to go with on your little bullshit trip to say to, to discover what's that what's out there in the desert and i'm fine with i, I was fine with that and little i know I'm, you guys are going to get captured and i'm going to go and, and i'm going to end up dying and now here we are chapter three years old Three years into the past, and all this bullshit happens. You think I want to come with you? Uh, let me think about it for a moment. Yes, you do. Come along, princess. I know you've been cooped up in that weird hotel of yours, in that, in that sex motel of yours for God knows how long. I think you may have started to develop a taste. Can, uh, can I chop here first? Okay, Draken. You know you're riding to the police precinct to take your guys and finally working the police department. And two... Walter wants you to come to the abandoned warehouse where you know where it is. You have two bikes. One bike is used for your preventive work. One bike is your personal use. Uh, I just say, not today, not today, Cross. I'm, I'm being, I'm being called in for a job. Then, uh, then he, then he, uh, it's a uh, disconnect the call. I don't, as soon as you disconnect, I'm like bloody clown. I'll show you. Who can disconnect it? My face. I'll oh, seriously gonna make you regret disconnecting that uh, that call from me, boy. I call the uh, the next person, which is uh, Zaskarka, Michael T. Uh, actually, Dion. Wait, how do you how do you say the name, Herbert? You don't know. You don't know who DeAndre is. Oh, okay. In yeah. That case, I you know... only know you you only know about this other other hero mm -hmm. that suddenly appeared in Omega City. Which calls himself Blue Rush. Hmm. You you don't know who this Blue Rush is, but hmm. you're trying to contact this Blue Rush personally. But so far, Blue Rush has always been doing normal, friendly neighborhood stricter, a uh, stricter actually. Oh. He runs around saving people on the streets, like normal. But other than that, he just simply vanished off the radar. Can I make a technology role to basically 
hack the cameras into the areas where he appears and disappears into in an attempt to triangulate his location. Okay, roll for technology with minus five penalty. Okay. <sighs> Here's one. Okay, up to the five, right now. Okay, you try to actually hack most of the video camera. You only see a blue streak, mm -hmm. and that's about it. But other than seeing the blue streak, that's about it on on many of the cameras. It's really simple. Um, most of the police personnel also do the same thing to chase after and look where he's actually going. But other than the, other than the blue rush, it's just a blue streak all over the camera. That's it. It's like a blur. Cheeky, cheeky. You can run, but you cannot hide from me. And eventually, I'll find out where you are. I look at Roach and say, Roach, be useful and call the uh, lazy-ass Michael and tell him to come over here. I may have something that him and I are required to investigate. And if he complains about it, tell him you'll smash his Gunpla collection. <laughs> Anyways, before you before that, Roach actually then tells you, Ah, uh, yes. But there is supposed to be something unusual. If you look at the map, look at the data, look at the information. Look at this blip. It tells you. This is an unusual energy signature, don't you think? And uh, this energy signature. Yeah, where is the energy <laughs> signature coming from on the map, Herbert? It's actually emanating at the Mega Night City itself. Centered around the the town center area, the mega city itself. Uh, is there any nearby security camera which I can hack just to view what building is supposed to be there before going there? Zero for technology. Okay, technology. It's a okay. 26, because I just need to know, like, what building in there before making my plans to travel there. Okay, when you use the camera, you and Roche both look at the security camera, and the street security camera is actually showing uh, the, a jewelry shop. But the camera is only pointing at the main door of the jewelry shop. You notice police personnel, roadblock, and a red carpet, as though they're waiting for somebody to actually appear. But you can't hack into the jewelry store security camera because the, the DC is way too high. Oh, definitely it's going to be the DC higher. I just look at him and say, well, now, looks like something is happening. Um, I'll go there as, you know, spectator, see what the whole fuss is about. I'll keep you, uh, I'll keep you posted with the latest thing. And while I'm gone, do call Michael and tell him to follow me to the jewelry shop. If he complains, again, tell him you'll smash over, tell him you'll smash his precious Gunpla collection and tell him to hurry about it because I think may, and I do say the word, may have found a way for us to get home. And I do seriously say may here. Emphasis on the word may. As I basically... Roche, Roche, and are you? Well, I'm going to be waiting here for GG. I'm definitely not going to be smashing my Gumpla. Gumpla is the most highest and most sought after community around this year. And it's been around for quite some time. And I collect Gumpla too. Roche, I don't say you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, take care of the place while I'm gone. And call Michael, tell him to follow me to the jewelry store when he is free. That's when I ready my gun, put it in, and just simply like... Uh, ready like you know go out of the place as i basically go out of the the main door before i step out i tell the ai to lock the main door and activate the external cameras on the outside as mm -hmm. i get into my beloved car and simply play uh play the song uh i want to rock ding, 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 ding. i just like play it all uh, in a loud <laughs> as loud as possible <laughs> right then after you head over to your car you can drive off so what's the location or where you actually know where the girl is mm -hmm. and uh, mean uh, back at michael's apartment 
Okay. Hope this guy's not here. All right. Michael. It's yep. been a while. You always had your break after working at the docks. You have always been taking care of a lot of things, but this the only problem is the year that you're in is not the year that you remembered. And the year that you remember is they were meccas all over the place. The docks that you remember is still there, but not the people that you used to work for. But when you head over there and tell them that who you were, you actually, they actually give you a job as a normal dock worker and that's about it. They, they, they think you're just crazy, but when you actually wanted to head back and try to work, yeah, you, you don't have your data anymore, your your ID doesn't make sense to them. And then after that, you just either out of the job or looking for a new job. And this apartment that you have cannot pay itself. And that's when you actually, when you start looking for a job itself, you actually either work to, to work as a person as working in a restaurant or working as a newspaper editor or a reporter, you think to yourself. Maybe that could work since you're going to be around during the action most of the time. And ever since the green and red ring actually appear and appear before your hands, that's when things have become more galactic. But because of the destruction that you have wrought upon the city. And of course, when causing the death of Derek Cole on the moon, you decided to actually lay low for a oh, Michael. You've seen the TV, you read the newspaper, you had your breakfast, you rented the place, you're trying to look for a job. What do you want to do? I okay, I have a newspaper, right? The, the very old newspaper, or is it digital now? No digital. I either go through digital or paper. I go to paper. I look for a job opening. Hmm. Right. They go through a lot of job openings and then you see the destruction there, Red Lantern destroy city. People still remember the crisis nine months ago. Red Wait, Lantern I... destroying half of the moon or quarter of it. See? My personal Wait, favorite. I... Wait, my, my personal uh... favorite. Red Lantern, a menace or a hero. An article by J. Jonah Jameson. Read it now. No, no, no. It's Jonah White. Oh, written okay. by Jonah White. Uh, uh, as I see this article, I think back to incident. To me, at that time, I was filled with immense rage due to Walter's words that say he owns him, which is the focal point of him raging out and wanting and having a slight hit on him. Friend, but he distrusts him. Okay. You don't see a job opening here, though. One is a newspaper reporter. Two is working as a a security officer for a newly opened diamond shop in the Mega Night City, and three, uh, working in a club, in a restaurant. Hmm. But you think to yourself, you're the Red Lantern. You have green and red, but the green doesn't work. The red does because of your race. And you know, green, green is actually more virtuous. And you were a good person before this. And it requires really strong willpower that she controls the greed. So, but you also think to yourself, you need the job. Because you don't want to sleep in the, in the streets if you can't pay for your apartment. And you, you have to be a job where you can actually be a superhero. And also, as mild-mannered Michael Westfield. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let me roll a. Uh, there's three jobs, right? Hmm. Can I roll a d6 to to choose which which is which? I don't know, man. It's up to you. Okay. One, two, yeah. What was the job again? A newspaper. A news editor. A newspaper. Reporter. Newspaper photographer. Reporter. Photographer. Okay, second is working uh, in as a security in a diamond. Diamond shop, and third okay. is working in a restaurant. All right, let me roll D6. So one to two is the reporter, three to four is the security guard, and five and six is the restaurant worker. 
I am going to go for the jewelry shop position, uh, the security guard. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. When you actually put look at the newspaper, then you're gonna take off for the job, the security guard, and then when you head out to your apartment. And then head towards the lift, you see a man actually then approach you and then said, oh, Morning to you, Michael. Morning. And uh, you see this man, this man has always been around. But he's always in the apartment and then everywhere else. And always making sure that people is staying nicely everywhere and so on and after you see Woody then look at you and I ask hey Michael don't you think you have some joint with you I with some I need some joint man I, I need to get my fix uh, excuse me uh, uh oh you mean drugs? I don't have any. I approach him and, and press his soldier, uh, pat his shoulder and say, uh, you should really stay out of those drugs. It doesn't help your brain. Okay. And then he looks at you and then roll for your persuasion. <coughs> so, uh, persuasion. 15, normal. And so, oh man. I was going to do some drugs, yo. Uh, after I lost my after I lost my parents up during crisis, I got nowhere else to go. Uh, not because of that stupid green thingy. I mean that red thingy that flew around destroying part of the city. I'll still be having to right now. Uh, let me roll for insight. Like, uh, do I feel sad about this? Uh, this is me talking as a player, not as a character. Hmm. And then for insight. I don't feel remorse at all because at that time I was engulfed no, in immense rage. Actually, if you, if you fail, you should actually feel... You feel sorry oh, for it. If you uh, feel sad. Uh, if you pass, okay, then you feel more remorse. Okay, okay. In that case, let me, uh, let me uh, rectify that. I feel immense remorse on what I did. To me, at that time, I was solely having one objective is to destroy what, what what caused my misery. I say to Woody, well, maybe you want to try, you know, finding a job with me. I'm heading towards this new jewelry shop. Maybe they have an extra opening. Who knows? Somebody they want the job to give me a place like for, for, me, for me, man. No way, man. No, nobody wants a junkie like me. I, I, I'm just gonna be singing, not singing you guys heading over to my apartment. Actually, the apartments is everywhere. Actually, the image that you see now is only your apartment, but the apartments is everywhere, left, right, in the shadows. You just can't see them. Not like uh, the previous Modern Day Twenty game where you can see everybody's apartment. I just let yeah. you see yours. But uh, then again, after that, he went to his house and then closed the door and leave you alone, heading to no. But. I, when you head towards the lift and then went down, you see another person actually already waiting for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me just drag myself here. I already dragged your character just now. <laughs> right. uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. As, you, see Victor, you see Victor Guerrero. Yeah. yeah before you and after that, he greets you. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Michael. What's up, man? What's up, my matcha? What's up? Hey, and you see him like treating you and say, Oh, how your day is fine, bro. Oh. Mm -hmm. I see oh. that you're quite cheerful. Oh, I think you're going to be looking out for your job, eh? Yeah. Staying at home is fun and all, but I need to make some money. I'm a hot right. kid, bro. And... Then Victor the Guerrero will say you, I hope you get a job, bro. Because the rent ain't gonna pay itself. And we all be paying for the rent you know, ever since crisis that will happen. You well, know, things have shoot and skyrocket, people losing their jobs, people losing their lives even. Oh. <laughs> he sighed, it's yeah. not because of it's not because of profits and doom. 
and that person that calls himself the right last one, uh, well, if he sees himself as a superhero, superhero, make sure that the city doesn't get destroyed and cause colorful damage, eh? Yeah, uh, perhaps you'd learn more from that that blue rush kind of thing. Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, in the newspaper, Jonah White calls him the blue rush. Hey, but say, who say they say him? Hey, could be a C or could be binary. Hey, whoa, man, calm down, calm down. We don't know who actually is the blue rush or that red lantern. I was just lucky to survive. <laughs> I, when I first saw you coming here, you had bruises all over the place. You had cuts here and there, bruises here and there. You were caught in the crossfire just as much as we do. Yeah. Well, I better head towards my job interview. Hopefully, there's there's not a line. Then I quickly head head up head outside and uh, you head my slowly, way. As you slowly head yourself towards the street, you see a particular man head out from his apartment throwing rubbish, and DeAndre, you notice this man walking out, he's apparently new in this apartment though, he seems quite sad, but not too sure, okay DeAndre, roll for insight when you see this man, and Michael, you see this man over here too. Alright, let me roll for insight as well. Right, 18, okay, it's just one of the tenants, Michael. You, you only know him by name, DeAndre, but other than that, he seems like a regular guy staying in this place, the same apartment that you're staying in. And I wave at him. I wave hi. I wave hi at him. Right. Being, being, being friendly. Okay. But I wave back so fast, you didn't even see my hand raised. <laughs> yeah, yes. Not too right. sure, Michael, but you didn't see this man wave his hand at you. Um, I just... Yes. Uh, Okay. You just what? I'll just say uh, good morning. Have a nice day. Then I just continue. So I just continue walking towards the jewelry store. If it's okay. nearby. All right. Continue walking towards the jewelry store. Okay. Grande, I actually finished work. You notice this man actually walking out and going to head towards the jewelry store. You are actually preparing yourself to actually pick up Lin Min May and head towards the jewelry store. And then I'm going to be dragging you two out at the apartment district. Let me look for the apartment. Oh, I got so many. I got more than 20 over maps. That's a lot for, for, for you know. Wait, I need to remove. <laughs> I need to remove Spider Man and the rest of these other groups of people. <laughs> but, uh, okay, apartment building one. Okay, I found it. Da, 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 da. Okay, these guys are not here. Yeah. Delete, delete, <laughs> delete, 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 delete. Uh, I ran the battle on, on the rooftop. Yeah. It's like, oh, look, a battle, DeAndre. Uh, let's ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michael. Okay. Then. DeAndre. Okay. There are two levels of this place. Uh, there's one underground and upper ground. So... When you take the lift, it goes down and goes up. The maximum is up to ground floor and top floor. And then, I need to take the Andre's very cheap car. And a car, car that that he cheap. can't really afford much. Oh, what, what? Oh, okay. I was gonna say a car that, you know, he can never afford somehow he's able to drive. That doesn't yes. make sense. Okay, wait, uh, okay, good. Right, take the car out. The cheaper, the better. Precise. <laughs> hey, not bad. I mean, Beautiful. It, it is affordable and nice. I like the style of cars. High car above the ground, economical on the fuel. Yeah, it won't cost you much. <laughs> okay, Deandre, you see Michael actually waiting for the bus at the side of the road. Okay. Okay, Deandre, what do you want to do? You wanna offer him a ride somewhere, or you just let him walk? You know, I'm gonna go get the bus. I'm um, just hop out and go, go, go pick Lin up. All 
all right, I'm going to give you uh, control of this car. Okay, the Andre. Right, okay, now you have control. You can actually highlight yourself in the character. If you highlight yourself, you both view a car will move together. Actually, just move your character. Just move your character into the car. It should be done. B one with the car. Yes. Ah uh, yes. And then then you highlight, <laughs> then you drag. Yeah, like that. <laughs> okay. The Andre just move away and drive off. Okay. Meanwhile, okay. Michael, the bus actually arrived. And you see, you see the greasy, the greasy old man with his bald head eating chocolate and like, hey, hey, Michael, hey, come on, hop on in. We're gonna go this time, hey. Ah, uh, to the jewelry store. I heard there's a job opening. As I enter, I said, I said those words. I enter the bus towards jewelry the jewelry store. store. I hope you're not robbing the place. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, I'm, I'm not that strong, nor that smart. Uh, you know, with the amount of supervillains that appeared recently, uh, well, I'm surprised that a jewelry store is still standing, eh? Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, I can make sure it stays open. Okay. And then when you two rode off, there was a jewelry store. Meanwhile, hey, okay, Draken. Draken, 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 you arrive at the police station. Okay, now we're gonna be dra Please drag your character and put him here. Okay. Right, Draken. Alright, All right, here we go. You arrive at the police station. Where are you gonna be getting your first badge? Fucking ass, detective. You see, Daniel, Danielle. Daniel Lan, here, they're looking at you. Hey, boy, you're late for your appointment. You must be the real recruit. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it's, been a hard, it's been a long day since that, for the past nine months. Uh, yeah. you, look at the, you look at Daniel Lane. She's one of those police officers that you've, you've saved during crisis <laughs> when she was actually trying to direct as many civilians as possible to actually escape. She was actually there when you actually push her away from falling debris, and that's when you see the blue rush, also helping other civilians from backing crash, all because of the, all because Michael couldn't control his powers, you think to yourself. But you are here now making sure that criminals stay in bars, or perhaps send to the high security prison in one of the mega cities slum. But when you head over here, Land Daniels, as he tell you, head towards this door, boy, and then head over and meet the chief. The chief is here. Take a few doors, take a few steps down, and he's there. Okay, so uh, I asked her to, uh, I, but I asked her to uh, come forward for a bit. Uh, and then I was, and then lean into her. Uh, I may have brought my keys, and you don't. Uh, do what? Uh, where do I drop it off? I was. I was to her. Uh, when I met, when she met, I appreciate. Sure, I thought I thought when she when she knows what I meant, keys. I mean, I mean my piss my handgun. Mm -hmm. Right, and she says, "Well, well, if it's an issue, handgun actually given to you by the force. Well, here's the keys." Your desk is here. She points to one of the rooms. Give me a name. And then, but you need to meet the chief first. The chief is here. You head over to the chief now and you're going to meet you. And then you're going to meet your partner. Okay, that, that I just, uh, I just was about, no, I mean, this is my pers my personal handgun. I mean, why do I drop it off? Why do I drop it off? For safety, for safety, for, for, for safety reason. Personal handgun? Boy, you know you're not supposed to be carrying a, a piece around with you. It's dangerous. With the streets, the tops, and everything. I, know, I, I, should, I, should. I know, I know, I know. I did just could stand quite, you know, paranoid. A little paranoid. Who's not paranoid? After the event of crisis, everybody's paranoid, he tells you. It's okay. Take your piece, put it in your locker, at your desk, and then head over to the chief. Here's the keys. 
Okay, let's take the keys. Thank, thanks. I can't. Uh, and she just, and then I just walk, walk straight to the desk. Okay, you're over to your desk. And then after you see Officer Eden Bell looks at you, boss arm. I actually wanted to call him Officer Johnny Sins, but uh, I probably uh, get black anyway. So, yeah. uh, Eden Bell then looks at you, ah, oh, so you're the new recruit, hey, Drake and Drake. Is that your real name? Sounds like sounds like a name straight off from a video game. Hey, don't blame me. Hey, don't. Hey, it's my my parents named me that way. It's not that like I can do anything about it. <laughs> he laughed, and then he looks. Well, the SC is quite empty. We lost quite a few people, but we lost a few number of officers during crisis. Ah, uh, um, you're not supposed to be here, Drake. Head over towards the chief room. Head towards this door over here, and head over. To the chief wants to talk to you. Yeah, about that. Uh, I need to go get to my desk. I gotta keep. I gotta keep my my. Your desk is. Room. Your desk is not here, boy. Head over towards uh, the chief. The chief will brief you further. This is for regular. Right. This place is for regular officers. Right. Your place. Uh, is right. I just uh just just awkwardly. Hit, uh, went to the, the direction he pointed at to the chief's office. Okay, here. Yeah. All right. I knock on the door first. Okay. When you knock on the door, you hear a voice coming in. Come in. Stop knocking. Uh, yeah. Just, so I just walk in as soon as he says come in. Then it's like, uh, I'm here. You're reporting for duty, sir. Detective Drake. He wipes his. It's glasses and it looks at you. Ugh. And somehow, Drake, this man has some eerie resemblance to Commissioner Gordon in Gotham City, but maybe the cousins, you think to yourself. Uh, I have to say, Cousin! Again, then. And cousin! you see the chief and looks at you, Drake. Here's your badge! Here's your gun! Here's the file. He took out the file report, and then after that, you notice it's like really thick, a few inches thick. And when you see them, and then he looks at you, and then you see the reports written there, and meta human reports, meta human incidents, meta human, and so on. You'll be joining the meta human task force, Dragon. We, when, when, when I get to see some action, Chief. Mm. You need to actually head over and talk to your partner, Zelda. Uh, wait. wait he just shook his head uh, and then opened his eyes. Wait, partner? Yes, your partner. You'll be working with her. You'll be working with Zelda. Zelda Robbins? Uh, all right, I guess. You do know you have a partner, right? You think you're going to be working alone? <laughs> No, you're uh, still fresh in this. I I just I just face pop I just face pop. Uh, it feels like some 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 uh, cheesy nineteen eighties cop drama. Tell you what, this is a cheesy nineteen eighties cop drama, and you're living <laughs> it. Uh, I have to say this, bird, fucking bird. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> uh, uh, well, chief, I just hope I just hope she you. She, I hope she's been she's been here longer than I have. I don't want to work with with, with someone who's who's new, who's green just as me. We lost a lot of number of people during crisis, Drake. And actually, we're quite happy that somebody as good as you actually appeared be around the force. You know, look at your files. Expert in criminology. Expert in law and order. Business law, and even matter human events. That's in your expertise, you know, mistaken. Uh, uh, this, eh, this smash. You know, I prefer, I prefer, I prefer, I prefer to go on the field and, you know, attack ah, the criminals that are alive if that, if you catch my drift. If you, you know, if you're allowed, if you allow it, of course. Well, you will be at the forest, so no later, you'll be in the field. 
But yes, your stuff. And over here's your desk. Your desk is not like not no longer at a normal police officer's desk. You'll be over the top new task force desk. And over here, boy, your desk just next to Jarvis. Okay, so I grab the new send issue piece, uh, holster it, my badge, put it in my pocket, grab the files. Whew. Wow, quite a way there. Haven't carried any weights in a while. <laughs> okay, you're actually like, oh, you know, the show they're actually quite strong, but you just lift it easily, and then after that, you just bring it towards your new desk. And then you see a number of other police officers looking at you, and they're looking at you up and down. Some of them like smirking. Some of them, gonna, some of them actually whispering and say that you're not gonna last within the next few weeks. You're probably gonna end so, up taking under. Uh, sorry, DM. I did that DM. But as soon before, as soon as I leave uh, the office, I say, "Well, oh, see ya, see ya, lunch, chief." Then I just take the elevator straight back to the uh to the detective's floor. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Which is here, this is your desk, this is Zelda Robin. Okay, he actually head over to your room. Yeah, you notice that she's quite skinny for her age. You know, notice that she's wearing some vest, with your hair, that's like her skinny outlook, and then her lips are looking at you and said, and then she said, Hi, my name's Zelda Robin, so she shakes your hand. You must be Sorry. the new recruit. Sorry, can't, cash, I can't, heavy file. Ugh. Oh god, oh god. Uh, I haven't worked right down like this for nine months. Uh, he'll listen to the ramen diet. Uh. <laughs> and, then, and after you put everything, the other actually try to shake your hand. They just look at your hands and look at you. And then she said, "So, it must be Drake and Drake. Nice name." Oh, don't mind that. Oh, that I prefer to call to call my last name as Drake and Guard. Sounds sounds more epic and old fan and old fancy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then, and then she she actually actually leans and then walks over towards your desk and said, "Well, we can be looking into mostly meta human incidents that's actually happening in mega night cities, and we're going to be quite busy with everything that's going to be falling around our laps most of the time. We're going to be looking into all these things and." Uh, have you read the newspaper recently? Yeah. Missing persons. Missing Thank persons you. and something else. Well, with everything that's going around and everything that's, that's happening in our city currently, and nine months was a long time. Even this police station was actually fallen into dust. And most of the criminals that we lock up mostly escape. If you notice, our jail cell is actually empty. And they only grow with more people that we actually catch. The jail is actually made personally for normal criminals and also super criminals, Drayton. Well, if the chief says, says to, get, to, give the, to get the kill order, well, that's one less, that's one less, per, one less criminal in the world. We can't kill. We have to follow the law, right? Yeah, we, yeah, I know. We, we capture, we apprehend. And criminals, no matter how hard they are, how evil they are, and how many people they killed, we have a law to follow. We have to apprehend them and and throw them by the book. We, we can't be vigilantes, Zelda told you. I, 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 just, I just sigh. <sighs> that's just hope that's not... That's not. There's no no crazy criminal mastermind who who repeatedly escapes the, the maximum security prison, who en- who ends up ne- not getting the death sentence. Yes, but but why is to stop other vigilantes from running around wearing some tight costume and sentencing these criminals when they're not supposed to? Have you heard the story about this person that calls himself the Shadow? I said the Shadow. I uh, I froze a bit. Uh, cold sweat. It's like. <laughs> Uh, I was I'm just new into town ever since nine months ago, and I've been ever and I rarely hear about this guy. Well, I need to tell you one thing: the chief, he is quite adamant in trying to capture this shadow. It seems that in, among any other criminals out there, this shadow person seems to be somebody that is quite obsessed with. I'm not too sure why. This thing. Yeah. 
I I I I to the side to the corner and try to remember what uh how I my my uh methodology of of uh, capturing criminals. <laughs> then you look at Zelda, you think to yourself, and like, hmm. Then Zelda and looks at you. Well, we got a lot of paperwork to do, and well, let's see what happens next. But we have other things to do, and other than that. Check your report, Draken, before we actually decide to actually drive out. You look at the files on your table, you look at the news, and you see there, one, on one of the files on the table, actually reported that said that Diamond owner opening a new shop at Mega Night City. When you look at it, and you look at the face of this man, he's quite good looking. He seems to be a millionaire, and he seems to be a Diamond owner, seems to be bringing all this stuff to Mega Night City. This is definitely going to attract a lot of criminals, you think yourself. So I I what I bring this bring it to Zelda's attention. Hey uh Zelda? And yeah What do you think is doing doing this kind of stunts is actually a kind of a bad idea? Zelda looks at you. Well that's where we're coming actually. The chief actually wants us to Look into this person that's coming to Night City. He calls himself Logan. Logan is a millionaire. Uh, I'm not too sure from which city he actually hails from. But it seems that he's actually a farm boy and ends up being rich because he inherits, and he inherits his family's wealth. Definitely not as rich as Bruce Wayne, but he's there, almost there, because of his good looks. <laughs> I, I just say, uh, great. Next, next thing you're going to tell me that he's a, that he's a millionaire playboy. Yeah, a playboy. Yeah, perhaps that. But <laughs> well, when you actually check your report, and once you're done, we have to head out. We we actually need to drive out towards the the diamond shop and see if everything goes well. We already sent a number of forces over to make sure that no villains actually appear. When I get to the field, the better. So I just put uh, arrange the files according to the type, uh, case types like meta, uh, uh meta humans, non meta humans, missing persons, uh, murder files and whatnot. And then uh, on to both my civilian side uh side arm and my sentry issue side arm. Yeah, and you prepare your side arm. And arms, arms. <laughs> Two. Okay. So, side arms, right? You yeah. prepare your side arms and about to actually and then you try to prepare as many things as possible. And then And then after that Zelda also sat next to you and I also prepare her files to look into if the other events that Okay, happened and it just yeah. Okay, and then it's now going to. I need to drag out. I need to drag out. Uh, whose car is this? Uh, okay, okay, yes. All right, yeah. DeAndre. Meanwhile, <clears throat> after driving along to actually pick up Lemonade from her apartment, you arrive at one of Night City's busiest areas, and then drive along. I'm gonna giving you commands of this car again. The city itself at night has always been beautiful. You don't want to break neon lights, people walking down the streets, brothels, the heavy prostitutions, and everywhere else. As you drive through the streets of a city, you realize that 
your PC is lagging really bad is because this map is high resolution. Okay. Now, as you're driving, I can actually see your character moving the... You, you can actually move the, bar, the car to the point. Okay. Now, you need to actually head over here to drive. And the moment you actually drive, you see the people on the street walking around and looking at you. Some of them actually are quiet, some actually minding their own business. But some actually just like looking at you normally. As you were so busy looking into other things. And you notice that driving is so much slower compared to your running. But when then in your drive and then you see Lin with me already waiting. That's when I realized that the car is actually quite small. <coughs> and then she actually turns and then looks at you and said, Ah, Yadri, you're late. And you wind down your window and then you look at me and me. And then she looks at you. What do you do, Yadri? Sorry, traffic. Can't do much. <laughs> the traffic? What? Well, the number of cars do we actually have here? Yeah, yeah, I can actually understand why. But you also don't understand why she's staying in this kind of place. But she's actually trying to make herself big, DeAndre. You're actually trying to make sure that her album will be a hit. But with all the things that you've been doing at the side, other than being your regular sound producer and sound expert, you can't really make that Lin Mime will probably be a hit one day. But you try to make sure that she will. And then get over inside your car, and then you decide to actually drive off towards the event. And then when you drop off, you and me may head straight towards the city streets where you can actually head towards the opening of the Diamond Exhibition. Okay, can we dragging this car out? This guy is... Okay, meanwhile, Walter Cross. Mm -hmm. Can you because me? all right the traffic has always been very very heavy ever since you actually arrived at the section of the city where they actually be an grand opening of the first ever diamond exhibit in the mega night city uh, can you ping where I am? Because I don't see I don't see my character anywhere. Wait, oh, I forgot to drag you in. Okay, then right, okay, map. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Traffic has been horrendous, Walter Cross, okay. and even to you, DeAndre. But can you flip when uh, you flip the car? Oh, that's your car park. Oh, okay. No, no, because I want to apply. Yeah, thank you. So I can, like, you know, uh, do it correctly. And I'll drag my character out. <clears throat> and while dragging the... Sorry. While, like, I'm beside the car, just leaning over, I tell Roach, who is, like, you know, on the phone near the computer, I've arrived at the location. Keep an eye out on the security camera, which of course you're going to be watching through it, what's going to happen, and I just, you know, wave hi at it. Record everything that's going to be happening for future reference, and yeah. Have you made call with Michael yet, Roach? Roach is going to respond back to you. Trying to get Michael. You never pick up. Keep trying again, and yeah. I'll inform you with anything that's going to be happening. 
uh, Herbert, from the simple computer pad that I have on my person, am I able to create a simple forgery ID for a, a Daily Planet reporter? Simple forgery? Yeah, yeah, a simple forgery ID to say, like, I'm a reporter. Mm, you should have done that earlier, earlier, earlier on that, uh, at the base. You can't do it in the car. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I just simply, like, take out my cigarette. I'm like, <sighs> okay, let's go get into some trouble now. I basically cross the street. And, well, of course, avoiding traffic and giving middle fingers to those who don't stop. And I'm also yelling, pedestrians have priority here, assholes. And when I arrive... I walk over to the police detective in the back to basically see if I can strike a conversation with her. And then as I walk over and say, big crowd here, detective. Is there anybody famous that's going to come here? The moment you arrive to see the detective, you are shocked. The moment you turn, you see Draken appearing at the other side of the door he's on the ceiling of the car to me <laughs> okay he appears and you see draken sorry uh sorry so again yeah, i'm actually in the car passenger mm -hmm. side checking uh my uh official uh official side um is it a revolver or a hand or a normal handgun but i'll wait for my turn for you to describe it's a high powered nine millimeter meant to actually stop ah. folks on their tracks and meant to actually at least injure a meta human. Okay, the other way, I'll just assume it's a normal, a normal hand, a normal handgun. It's a high powered nine millimeter. The damage is plus one. So if, if your damage is already plus three, it becomes a plus Sorry, four. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm damage actually asking about the the archetype, the the frame of the gun. So I'm just going to assume it's just a normal handgun. It's a normal handgun then. Yep. This this mm -hmm. is this is silhouette. All right. Oh well, I'm just gonna wait. Just okay. Yeah, you know, but if while. you're in the car, you notice Walter Cross outside of the car talking to Zelda. I'm just gonna. I I just groan inside the car. I just groan. Uh, this asshole again. Yeah, hey, roll for inside, just... Okay. I'll use my heroes. Uh... Yeah, you have to. <laughs> you're not too sure what Walter is doing here. Either he's trying to hit on Zelda, but 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 then again, you've seen what Crash have done to Walter, so you're not too sure whether Walter is here. But if Walter is here, there could be either two things: something big is going to happen, or he's just here because he's bored, or both. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna wait for the car in the car until he leaves, then get out. All right. Okay. Well, that. Lin Min may head out of the car, DeAndre, and then she already have an invitation to actually enter, and then you just need to drag your character at the side of the car, and then you can actually further in. If Craig is not in this game, the whole conversation is going to be uh, any any events that actually happen. Craig, you're not in Roll Twenty. Craig, are you there? I can't. Yeah, I'm on voice. I'm on roll twenty at the moment. Roll twenty is not playing at the moment. Just drag me around. What's uh, what's going on actually at your location, Craig? What 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 uh, your internet issue or or yeah, get a storm. I'm in a storm here right now. It's come. It's cut me Wi Fi up. Uh... Oh, okay, that explains it. Okay, Craig. It doesn't really matter. Um, you're just gonna role play. At least we can hear you. You can see the role play. Okay. Yeah. So. Just, just that any event that happened later on. I can, I, I can move really quick. So, mm -hmm. find any yeah. burst or boost. All right. Okay, your scene have arrived yet. Okay. All right, Drayton, you're in the car. You look at what the cross. But meanwhile, okay, meanwhile, inside the diamond shop, Michael, your phone have not stopped ringing ever since you come here to actually apply for a job. You see uh, the man. For now, I'll just I'll just ignore for now. I'll just I'll just ignore the phone call and focus on getting the job first. 
you see the man that actually hired you, Pat Dittman. He looks and stares, hands in his pocket and said, uh, well, <coughs> it is actually of short notice and thanks for actually coming, Mike. Oh, uh, we will actually, you're the man of your state, you perhaps the man of your expertise, working in the docks, uh, a number of things, and uh, your resume seems to be quite blank, but we needed someone to be actually quite, to be here quite fast and urgent. And uh, you'll be looking at this side of the section of the, the area, Michael. And again, thank you for helping. Uh, it's a pleasure. After all, I, I like working in an honest job. Makes my heart feel yeah. reassured. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, we'll be waiting for Logan to actually arrive. He's the man, the, uh, the man of honor, actually. And because of this stone over here, well, mm -hmm. let's just say that this artifact, they actually found this, this magical diamond seems to be quite intriguing. And, well, as you do know that Mega Night City is the so-called safest place to be in compared to Emerald City, Star City, or even Metropolis, or even Gotham. And, um, well, ever since the Red Lantern disposed of Professor Doom, we see some sort of <clears throat> a lower end of, of crime drop. And, and thanks to the vigilante shadow, well, most of the criminals are either six feet under or forwards. But, but thanks again, Michael. Uh, you will attend to our guests, all right? Oh, uh, also working as security, um, you do you do know your where you are. Well, you actually also holding a nine millimeter pistol at your side. It's high powered. Is to to see if there's any hiders for criminals actually coming to you, Michael. But over here, you think to yourself nothing is going to happen ever since the last nine months. Professor Doom has been taken care. of. You know that. You show it yourself. Derek Cole was buried deep inside the moon scraper. You don't see any body. There were no bodies. You just buried him alive. And that's what's about it. But, yep. Pat Dittman that walks over. You see a number of people here. You know them, actually, because when you look, you see this particular man, actually, like, looks at you and mostly looking around and smiling. You know him as Jack Frost. And this beautiful, smile back. this beautiful lady over here wearing her glasses, her normal clothing. You know her as, she actually, you know her as Liliana Klaus. Wait, what? Liliana, Liliana Klaus. The daughter of, from one, actually one of Trevor Klaus' granddaughter. And then over here is Daisy Dalton. You notice that she's actually quite happy to be around here and then looking at the jewelry. But nobody is actually allowed to actually stand closer to this one. And then Cindy over here is also working security with you and also looking into the jewelry. And then you see this floating magical stone here. You heard stories that people talked and said that this crystal, this diamond, actually came from, from a place known as Karatur. Karatur does not exist on this planet, think they are so. It comes from another place, another dimension. It seems that in the news and the newspaper that Logan Stryker and his, uh, during this expedition, in one of the pyramids in the desert itself, unearthed this crystal, which came from a place that many refer to as Greyhawk. You don't want to dwell too much into the mystical arts, you think to yourself, because... Mm, because I know that I do have some magical thing, but due to what happened last night, I can't tap it for now. Mm -hmm. yes. For now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because there is no magical superhero in the group, okay? Unless Walter Cross suddenly decided to become Doctor Strange, or Yan suddenly decided to bring in a mystical character, then there will be a different origin story from there on. But when you look at this crystal, 
you think to yourself, you sigh of sort of relief and think to, and said that huh, luckily that Professor Doom has been taken care of because he and his henchmen and his bunch of lackeys escape and stayed quiet for some time. So, Michael, what do you want to do? Uh, DM, if I uh, this is a play play a uh, play question. If I were to wear the green ring, say it hasn't activated or reacted to me, it just a normal ring, right? It's just a normal ring. I I wear the green ring in in mm-hmm. crowd sec. Ah, simple thing. Okay. I just mend my station and is uh Liana is is she is she close? Yeah, she's close. Mm, okay. I'll then I just greet her. Let's hope we have a good day today. Call persuasion. Okay. Persuasion, persuasion. Where is my persuasion? Ah, here we go. Ah, no more ten. Just he just. I'm just being friendly. And she said, "Well, I think tonight's gonna be a good one. I don't think anything bad's gonna happen. I'm sure." Is that? Mm. Okay. Um, and uh, then, uh, what? What is it? Uh, I just uh, Michael just smells like he's very he's very pleased that he has a job, like a simple job, simple life. Mm-hmm. Very peaceful. Okay, and then you know you look at the file that this lady is actually hoping. She noticed a number of files actually she, she was actually holding, and then she looks around you, looks at others, and so on. You know to show whether she's actually a reporter. But you do actually see a badge on a name tag and put their little clause and then after the DP and that's about it. DP doesn't stand for that pool. So meanwhile, outside the diamond shop. Okay. Meanwhile, Lin Min May and DeAndre. Lin Min May you holds your hand, DeAndre, and then suddenly walks together with you further up towards the red carpet. And then you mean and said, come, oh, Deandre, you're my escort for tonight. So as long as you're with me, you can actually come in. Cool. Oh. Okay, while well, you actually waited at the carpet, the others. Meanwhile, Walter Cross, you actually talked to Zelda. Robbins, you need this on name tag. Uh, 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 DM, just to info, uh, Walter Cross, the player, oh, he, uh, he, buff, he, he, went, he went to bathroom. He went yeah, to the bathroom. I didn't, I didn't read the text. Okay, Lin Min May brings you DeAndre towards the main door. And then actually, actually waited. You notice. Not before you could actually enter. One particular person actually appeared before the door. And then after that, then looks at both of you. Ah. Sorry about that. You must be guest. Okay. The Andre, when you look at this man with his long black white hair, jumped to the to the back, and his muscular body actually then showing his two hands it appear. His eyes actually piercing through and looking at you, the Andre. You feel uneasy when you look at him. Then he shakes him. He offers his hand towards you. The Andre wanted to shake hand. Do you shake his hand? Yeah, I will. You shake his hand, he introduced himself. My name's Sean. Sean Magaki. And you are? Uh, uh, DeAndre Wilson. I'm here just to escort uh, Miss Lynn over here. Let's assume that your character is nicely dressed for the night, DeAndre, because we don't have time to look for a, a nicely dressed uh, black guy okay, for, for the game. Yeah, so like I say, let's, yeah, let's assume that you're nicely dressed, you're wearing your suit, you're wearing a two-piece suit, you're like and you're escorting Lyndon May here to the jewelry shop, and then when you actually send your escort and he looks at you up and down, hmm, pretty nice escort. And he picks over the shoulder, your shoulder is this, ah, the beautiful Lyndon May. He actually said, I've been actually admiring your work in on 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 YouTube, not YouTube, not Y O U Tube, is U T U B E on YouTube. Ooh, dude. Oh, also, the uh, Walter Cross is back. All right, good. Okay, and then sorry to interrupt. He actually took out his cigarette and starts smoking outside the Andre. And Lin Mei Mei then actually looks at you, Andre, and then he he whis- she whispers to you slowly, and she said, "I don't like him. He has this weird. I'm not too sure." 
give me this weird tingling feeling. Like, Let's just get like inside. They slowly get inside, then together, and then let me, then let me actually enter, and then gonna be dragging you in to the shop. Okay. Right, there's a door. Lin Min may enters together with you. And then, Michael, you see another girl and enters the shop. Together with another nicely dressed man. Which, apparently, you met him before. He was the same man that was throwing the rubbish at the apartment that you're staying in. But when you wave at him, this man was so rude that he didn't even wave back at you. And the Andre, when you actually entered this beautiful establishment, the first thing you noticed was this crystal floating here. The second thing that you noticed was your neighbor working as a security. So, Michael, let's assume that you're actually wearing a two-piece suit. Okay? Not wearing this, yeah, you're wearing a suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, you're wearing I, wear, a suit. I wear a nice black suit. Yeah, I wear a nice black suit. With a bow tie, yeah. just to compliment. Yes, with a bow tie. Okay, DeAndre, you notice that Lin Mei actually admiring and looking at all the jewelry. Okay, DeAndre, what do you want to do? I asked, uh, are you going to buy anything today over here? You notice a man actually walks over to you and to Lin Mei. Hi, my name's Pat. Ditman. I'm the owner of this establishment, but everything here and all the jewelry here that you see is owned by Logan. You heard of the name Logan, DeAndre, and Lin Mime like said, Oh, Logan, the, the jewelry entrepreneur. Yeah, I heard about, lot about him, Playboy, Show Off, and everything else in between. You also heard a lot about him, DeAndre, also from Lin Mime, that this Logan person, hmm, yeah, he doesn't really have much of a good personality. But Pat Littman then slowly walks and said, please enjoy the scenery. The, the diamond crystal over here, well, that's for the moment is off limits until Logan actually arrives. But we'll wait for him until he does. So you actually make yourself at home and our guests will actually serve you food and beverages, should you need be, everything else. But the Andre actually, when you're actually busy looking at Limi Mei, one particular person actually walks over to you, his short white hair, Strong coat, his red tie, and his very cheeky smile. And then he shakes his hand towards you, DeAndre, and he said, Hi. Do you shake his hand? I, I will shake his hand. So, man? <laughs> you shake his hand. You notice that his hand is actually slightly cold to the touch, as if that you think the air corny here in this place is cold. But then this man actually introduced himself. My name's Jack Frost, and I admire what you wear for tonight, and also the beautiful lady next to you. But of course, my eyes are set on something else for tonight, other than the jewelry there. He smiles and then looks at you slowly, Gandhi. He's giving some of a slight vibe. Roll for insight. You're not too sure whether the chill that you actually felt when holding his hand was because that this man was actually cold to the touch or is it because he's giving you some weird vibe as if it's gay. But he slowly then moves away and then leans towards the wall while letting you enjoy your time with Lin and me. Okay, DeAndre, what do you two want to do? Do you want to mingle around? Okay, not okay, DeAndre and Michael, what do you two want to do? Okay, DeAndre um, first. Yeah, DeAndre first. Uh, basically, I will just ask Lily. I'll just escort Lily. May I just tell, uh, talk about the jewelry around here? How much is it? Or who, uh, who made this? Or all that? Lah. Okay, you explain to her everything. Then after she walks around, they explain to her about the jewelry. You try to actually know about the jewelry, about the history, and everything. Okay, uh, you can actually put into your expertise. Expertise in mythos and mastermind can be everything. It can be about magical stones stones or or rocks in particular uh 
like uh, what Meteoro uh, meteor meteorology okay all the known yeah all the known rocks that you know it's like you're you're an expert in that you study it and then after that like uh, and everything else but too bad you cannot add in a lot of expertise like in more than 20. you can only choose up to four expertise that your character may know of. but since it's a super heroic you guys have not actually faced any other super villains yet okay so hey deandre and then you talk around with Lin Min Mei, and then you explain to her about everything about the stones they actually see and she actually likes. But you notice that she's really not into all these diamonds kind of shit. She, is, she tells you that, and they are beautiful and all, she looks at you, but I'm not into all these diamonds and stuff. Uh, my mother always tells me that, that diamonds is just really high of the beholder. But what do I know? I've never seen a beholder. <laughs> she laughed. Hey, Michael, what do you do? I ask, uh, okay, my post is to stay here, right? It's like, my post is to No, your post here, is right? to stay, but you can walk around also. I gently approach the two. I gently approach to these two. And as I approach them, I greet them with, Good afternoon, how are you enjoying the, the event? Is it good to your, is it good to your eyes? Let me mail, then turn to face you, Michael. And then she said, yes, everything feels beautiful. Everything's nice. We're just waiting for the guests of honor so everything can start. I'm, I've been really eager to actually see this Logan person. Uh, yeah, what's, what's uh, Min Mei's eye color? What do I see? What's her eye color? Green. G green. Oh, red, red. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Red. Blood red. Okay, red. okay. I'm going to role play as a flirty person, if you don't mind. Is that allowed? Well, you notice that you notice that when she was actually holding a bag inside the bag, you actually notice something. Roll for perception. Okay, perception. Doink. Yeah, that's okay. eleven. You see that she's actually reading a, a book, like a it's one of those fairy tales that you've known so much in many of those libraries. And inside of the bag, she's reading this book. That's that's called the. The Mischievous Adventures of Kofrugaki. Yes, yeah, she written there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, DM! Thank you! And then, Thank you, DM! And you're not sure how she actually read this book, but this book is a, it's a bestseller. It's written by a man that calls himself Boruk. And Boruk is, is the author. And um, yes, this book also exists in the D&D world. So it actually hey, exists in this hey, world thank also. Thank you, DM! You know? Thank so, you! <laughs> so meanwhile, in the other world, Boruk is asking Kofu, so before I write this story, tell me about your life, your biography, and it's not writing, do 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 it's not selling. <laughs> okay, anyway, meanwhile, okay, DeAndre, you see this particular handsome blonde man talking uh, okay. to Lin Min Mei. What do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to say? Uh, uh, DM, can, can I open conversation with Lin Min Mei first? Yeah, sure, sure, go ahead. I point out to a pair of ruby earrings to her. You do know your eyes are very crimson, like rubies. They're quite beautiful under the sun. Maybe it fits you. Okay. Then she looks, looks at it, and so on. Roll for persuasion. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like letting out my a bit of my anger. Persuasion rolling. Yeah, no more eleven. I'm not. I'm not expecting her to do anything. I'm just complimenting her. Then she looks at the ruby earrings and said, well, they are beautiful, she said. And then, then she surely turns to the Andre and said, the Andre, do you think this is beautiful? This, this, this very nice gentleman here said, this rubies will go well because of my eyes. But you say you're not, you're not into diamonds. I'm not. What do I'm not, but, but he said that it fits me. I mean, if you think that it fits me, then 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 perhaps I should get it. It's your money. It's up to you. Hmm. You're thinking. Well, I'll decide about it. Um, well, I'll just have to wait then. Okay, Michael. You see this man, the Andre, also nicely dressed. You are also nicely dressed. You're like this scene where 
Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent meeting each other during an event. They were looking at each other. Uh, then I asked, I asked the fine gentleman beside her, um, are you perhaps her entourage or her close friend? Uh, I'm just here. I'm just following her. That's it. Not more, not less. What are you? What, are, uh, what about you? Do you do you work here? Oh, I just uh, technically I did. I just got hired. Um. Anyways, enjoy the event. If you need me, I'll be over in my post right over there. Enjoy the event, uh, Miss and Mister. I politely walk away towards back to my post. I thought to live speaking of best, where's the damn food? <laughs> and then we take the damn food. I think this lady actually walks around with a plate on her hand, and then after that, serving everybody that is here on this floor. And she said, "Hello, my name's Shirley, and here the food and beverages." And I think she gave you a cup of wine and normal finger food. You're really hungry, Deandre, because your metabolism is crazily moving super fast. And then after that, then she walks around serving others. Okay, Deandre, luckily, what do you want to do before I move to Walter C? Uh, that's pretty much it. I would probably like to look at uh, this this thing. Is, it, is there like any anything covering it or is it just floating on a pedestal? It's floating on a pedestal, floating and spinning. Similarly, dam- diamonds never do this, Deandre. You're just surprised at how is this thing floating on that pedestal. Is the pedestal having some sort of gravi- gravitational energy? Or is it the crystal itself? I was just a comment on Lynn that the, it's impressed that the size of this diamond could exist and float. Yes. You're very surprised. And it's even much more dangerous, you think to yourself, Deandre, that nobody is here to smash through that wall and grab it. Maybe because crime is actually at an all-time low rate because of what happened during the crisis event. All right, that's it. I'm done. All right. Okay. Now moving to Walter Cross and Draken. Okay, Walter, Zelda Robbins actually asked you like, yes, what can I do to you, citizen? What can I do for you? Uh, Detective, I'm glad that I found you. I'm a reporter for the Daily Planet and I was crossing the street. I dropped my ID and sadly the cars ran over it. I know as police detective you are allowed to issue temporarily press passes and I was wondering... Are you able to give me a pass? I just need to interview some people, take a few pictures for the daily plant, otherwise my editor will fire me today. Roll for deception, break in, roll for insight. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alright, break in. Okay, so I get out of the car and then when as soon as uh Walter Walter uh back the police officer what he's doing. Okay, Draken, just, you see, yeah. you see this, you see this, you see the same shit that's always been done by Walter. Yeah, so you know what he's doing. I get between them, and I put my hand on his chest, and I, I try to shove him. Whoa, 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 bro. You you walk the same damn, the same damn trick, trick again. What trick? I'm a reporter, right. work for the Daily up. Planet. What the oh, fuck sure are you, you are. on about? Oh, sure you are. Oh, sure you are, Walter, Walter Cross. I just lean closer to your ear and say, Don't fucking ruin this thing or I will drag you along with me. So, yeah, let me let me do my thing and, and I'll let you do yours. Caprende? I, I, just, I look back at Zelda. Uh, Zelda, what should, I, what should I do with this guy who's trying to threat to uh, has threatened the police officer? <laughs> Well, that it looks at like you, Draken, and it looks at Walter Cross, and then she said, Well, I do admire a man with balls, and apparently he does have a huge one. Hmm. And it seems that my conscience is actually asking me to do, to do a body search on him, to see if he's actually armed and dangerous. I take out, I quickly take, I take out my handcuff, I get a handcuff. Once I put this on him, he's all yours. Whoa, whoa, no, whoa, 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 you don't, you don't have to put a handcuff on him. He, he didn't do any crime. He's, 
Yeah, so I try ask, and put I, your head in. Yeah, I ask for a temporarily press pass. I work for the Daily Planet as an external reporter, as the editor call it, meaning I'm expendable as if I don't produce results. And yeah, the rich and famous are about to open this damned place, and I want to earn my my living plus my rent for today. All I want is a temporary press pass, and I'll interview people on the inside and the outside, and I'll be on my way. The other sure. thing I'm armed with is, is my... As soon as you let me get in contact with the supervisor. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I do it. You want to call my supervisor? Uh, Herb, can I pass him my phone? Who oh, it will like immediately ring um the computer with a pre-recorded message. On like you know this is the the supervisor and everything. I'm not currently at work. Blah blah blah. Leave a message. Uh no, all these things have to be prepared. I think you need to get go through your equipment list. But you would you it could have worked if GG was at the home base and working through <laughs> Friday. <laughs> And uh, but only Roche. Roche is not a tech savvy guy. Only GG is, so only GG can actually help you if GG was at the base. So yeah, too bad. Uh, but GG is not tough luck. Tough break. Tough break. Tough break. Mm. <laughs> because GG is also uh he's actually like a robotic superhero. His main mm -hmm. function is to serve and protect. So he must be very busy somewhere else at mm. the mega city. Yeah. Uh, what's my options here? Uh. Your options is to uh, persuade Dragon to say okay. that why you need to actually head inside. Otherwise, oh, Dragon actually, is just yeah, probably yeah, gonna will, make sure actually, that you stay inside. I will actually. See if you can I will actually. I will actually persuade keep, keep trying, him. Keep trying. I will actually persuade yeah, him. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you can forget yeah. to go for it. <laughs> I don't have. I have like what one point in one rank in persuasion, net, and that's it. Net one. But wait. Okay. Uh, I'm surprised at my persuade. Oh wait. Uh, why is it's your presence. Oh, your presence. Okay, my presence. Yes, presence is, my is under It's your presence. Your presence is for your intimidation, your outlooks, and everything else. Your presence is zero. Oh man. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Your death. Your death smart, I'll but I mean, I'm not charismatic. Yeah, that's for sure. You're not. You're yes. not. You're not Tony Stark charismatic. You are. You you are Tony Stark smart, but not Tony Stark charisma. Yes. True. Okay, so can I? Yeah, go ahead. Break the your turn. Okay. Yes, save it. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're just trying to sneak your way in, try to swipe a few diamonds here and there. Swipe a few diamonds? Yeah, who, yeah. who the fuck I, do you think I, just, I, am? I just, I just, I just, I just, I just show my gun. You better leave now. You better leave. I just like look at you with one brow, like, you know, rising. I'm like, really? The pea shooter again? You went from a sniper rifle. And a goddamn sword to a pea shooter. My, how the mighty have fallen. Zelda, I... then. Zelda, the moment you say sniper rifle, Zelda raised an eyebrow and said, Wait, sniper? Uh, it's my old. Eh, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's an old gig. Old gig? Uh, you never told uh, her? I, you I, never told I, her that I, we I, worked I, together? I, I... You quickly put your hand on his own water cross mouth, like, Rrr. No, no, <laughs> so I, I, I fit my. My second issue, issue, uh, ah. handgun. You better leave. You better leave, sir, or else, or else you, or else you're gonna get, you guys, or else I'm gonna call for backup. Uh, yes, for the cross. <laughs> Draken has a hidden identity that he prefers to stay hidden. Okay. Uh, I don't think you want to force Draken to 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 shoot you down, even though you never do any crime. Or arrest you. Or arrest you. You, can, you cannot arrest a pedestrian for not doing anything, you know. Plus, I have a permit for my gun. So yeah, joke on you. You cannot arrest me for not doing anything. Not even jaywalking. Oh. Well, the, um, if you're still going to get... Hive of self you over. You're still going to be under arrest for, <laughs> for threatening a police officer. Can you prove it? Zelda then said... Well, Zelda then said... Mm -hmm. well, Zelda uh, uh, yeah, I'm so disturbed, but Craig, did you say something? Craig? I'm just saying, no, it's pretty hard to prove when a hydro tank runs you over. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Zelda, Zelda actually interrupts you, Draken, and said, Well, we don't have to be threatening this poor civilian over here. He's just merely asking 
it's just very really loud. We most likely want to get into the cell, into into the diamond shop. But we need, do need to actually do a cross check to see whether this person is a criminal. Why is, why are you actually even trying to head into the diamond shop when you're not even in the invite list? Um, and how could she quickly check, take out the bio scan and check, check you for a while? And after that, they should offer it to you, Walter Cross. Please put mm-hmm. your fingerprints here, sir. Uh, quick question to you. I public public you... knowledge here, um, they have cybernetic parts, is it? Like, uh, some, some people prefer not to be... Everything? This is the year 2069. Cybernetic have not reached its advanced stage at 2099 where you mm-hmm. came from. Oh, because okay. in 2069... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in, they, you still need to actually scan your thumbprint so that they can at least check who you are. That's it. Oh, okay. No, no, no. No, yeah, I'm asking. So if I were, like, for example, to put my cybernetic hand, it will be very, very strange to her, right? What cybernetic arm? Um, you don't have your cybernetic arm. Your arm is back to normal. Oh, okay. Did we grow? Oh, man. I, I was uh, Yeah. Anyway, um, I put my thumbprint into the into the scanner. It would have been looked nice with a cybernetic arm in terms of roleplay. I put my... Oh, and then you put your cybernetic finger? You put your finger there and you say... Oh, no, no. Oh. I, no I was going to, like, put my normal human hand finger there, but if she were to notice it, it would have been very nice, weird conversation into how am I going to be explaining a cybernetic technology, which, technically speaking, should be on clinical trials by now. Alright. Okay, then you put your thumbprint there, uh, and then she checked. Within a few seconds, she got a data. I said, huh, Walter T. Cross. Uh, H, okay, yep, that checks out. Nope, quite clean. You're not a criminal. And you're not super, too. Sorry about that, Sheila. But, well, uh, why are you so insisting in actually entering the opening for Logan's new diamond shop in the Mega Night City? I run a freelance website for, you know, online press and a bit of a tabloid thing. I thought I could, you know, sneak in, take a few pictures and, you know, write a publicity stunt on how bad of a, you know, of a show this is with, you know, him just flandishing, uh, sorry, brandishing okay. his money I want, across. Uh, I want you to roll for deception. Draco knows you're lying your ass off, mm-hmm. but you're rolling your deception to Zelda. Yeah. Oh, the spy agent for his mother. Seven! Okay. Seven. All right. I have well, nothing in my deception, only one point in persuasion. Well, uh, you run a tabloid, but your information here and your data actually says otherwise. You work for an electronic shop somewhere nearby. Can someone roll a d20 for me? Okay. Somebody please roll d20. Wait, he's not even. Uh, his character is not even here, actually. Uh, he had a uh, uh, Craig had problems with oh. his rope and deep. Oh, okay. Because I, uh, I thought his what character is. Yeah, uh, oh. uh, I'm running. I'm ro- I'm running both in, both theater of the mind and also rope and deep. Okay, oh, okay. All right. On three. Yeah. All right. When you explain everything to Zelda, mm-hmm. both across. When you look at the information, you look at her data pad. And the information there, written there. Hmm, judging from here, this information that I got here, when she looks at the data pad, you look at it, Draco knows you're lying. Draco didn't even bother looking at the data pad because he knows you're just lying through your too. But then yeah, he said, it, he says here that you don't really work for some for some tabloid or you're running any tabloid. There's none actually on your name on the World Wide Web. So hey, just be- either, you're trying to pull, either you're trying to pull my leg really long here or you're really desperate to actually head inside but it doesn't say that you're a criminal, but it seems that my, uh, my partner, Draken here, Draken, you've been working now for a short few hours with your other partner, Zelda. But Walter, you know that Draken has now been accepted as a detective in the police force after the events of crisis. And he worked, his, he worked so hard just to be accepted into the police force to make sure that he can work as both as Shadow and as Draken at the same time. But Draken have no idea why is your fix- fixation on entering here. In order for you to actually roleplay this further, you need to tell Draken about the unknown 
power source that you detected on Friday, I mean on the co- on the computer database Friday, that was given to you by Stark before he died. Mm. But Draken mm. doesn't know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I basically this. Mm-hmm. I basically look at the detective and say, "Detective, before I, you know." tell you a few extra things. Is it okay if I were to take that handsome young partner of yours to the side and talk to him for a bit? You know, we're old army buddies, aren't we, Detective Draken? I just crossed my arms with it and raised my eyebrow. You better not be doing anything stupid or stupid, you got that? We're in the city center surrounded by so many police officers and not also, you know, a couple of armored vehicles. Do you think I have the mood to pull anything stupid? Who the fuck do you think I am? Dr. Frost? Yes, I... Alright. We'll go. Hey, look at Zelda. Uh, you don't mind keeping uh, keeping an eye out, will you? Uh, basically, we're gonna... Zelda, lad. Well, I'll be here. I doubt anything's gonna happen. Well, okay. So, this, uh... not Emerald, this not Emerald City. Break the Emerald City... Superhumans, meta humans are everywhere. Yeah, well, okay. it's quiet. So, uh, oh, okay. Uh, Walter and I walk here. Mm-hmm. And then we we'll discuss. All right, fill it. You better and you better not be pu- pulling any more stunts like like this morning. I, you know how hard I work trying to get to get this job, right? Yeah, and frankly, congratulations. By the way, you really did deserve it. What you don't deserve is abandoning me, and I called you to fucking come over. I had something. There is something weird underneath this jewelry shop. The jewelry shop has displaying a, an energy signature similar to that of a nuclear reactor. Put that in your head and, you know, put two and two together, and yeah, there's something abnormal about this jewelry shop, and I have to get in to find out what's the abnormality, because if the abnormality something that could get us a ticket into home... We're going home, rather you want to or not. We cannot stay here. 30 years in the past, more like a death sentence, if you ask me. Okay, uh... Yeah, can he mm-hmm. roll persuasion? Can I roll persuasion? Why do no, I need to roll can persuasion? He, okay, he, can he roll a persuasion? Yeah, of course he can roll a persuasion. Okay. I'll roll my insight. Oh, come on! Ugh. Oh, oh, that one. That one. <laughs> right. Okay, just. <sighs> All right, you convinced me. But, but it's better not. But this better be the truth, or uh, or else we got a lot of people to talk to. Hey, and I could I lose my job you. on yeah. the first day. I called you this morning. I told you, come over. I got something to show you. You're the one who preferred working on that bike of yours. Which is, by the way, how is that bike of yours been handling? Been hearing the roaring on the on the phone, got me almost a headache. Eh, uh, you don't want to know. Also, tell that pretty right. pretty uh, partner. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of missing my my old biker gang in Sakura already. You mean the biker gang that has yet to be formed? Remember, we're thirty years in the past. There is no biker gang yet. Stop, if you know what I stop mean. Stop me gaming. I'm gonna go. Please, Kaiba. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I can't hear him. What do you say? Uh, I believe he says he's going. Oh? I'm not right, sure. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut 30 years in front and go. I'm oh, gonna he's gonna, gonna cut. Gonna the, I'm gonna be trying to race in the police. Fighting one. Okay, let me get this straight. You're trying to cut off the conversation and telling the police? Uh, is, that, is that correct? No, I don't even know where I'm at. Oh, oh, you, oh. You, you can't oh, see yeah, the map. Yeah, the you're, uh, you're actually you're, you're not there yet. You're not here yet. You're actually okay. driving. Yeah, okay. You're actually uh, driving right now to the jewelry shop. So actually for the, reop- for the opening and also for the, jewel- for the jewelry that you actually just found, uh, Logan. During one of your during one of your father's expedition towards one of the ancient deserts in and one of the sunken pyramids in the Sorry, in the sir, desert. I was, I was uh, oh, you think it was it? No, no. You you have it. Your entrance will be grand, be grand during yeah. for now. But for now, this is like before your your character is like on the way. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, your character is actually on the way. On the way, you know. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, All right. On. Okay, and then. Uh, okay, after having the conversation with Autocross and Draken, okay, continue. Uh, yeah. I just uh, look at Draken and say, So, give me a temporary press pass. I'll go in, take a few measurements, take a few pictures, assess what the hell is displaying that energy signature. And I'll cut you in into a first class ticket of going back to, you know, good old famous Night City with the famous bars and the shitty life that we all know and love. I mean, don't get me wrong, 30 years in the past is nice, but yeah, I don't want to be here. There's no technology. At least not a proper one, hey, that is. Yeah. I poke his chest. You better not you better not involve me with some some more some more crazy bullshit like once once we're home. You got that? Walter, you know for a fact, mm-hmm. Walter, you and the others know for a fact you can't go home because Derek Cole, the only man, the only person, the only person possible that can open the gate to another different dimension, he is the only one that can actually send you back to your original timeline. Only problem is Michael killed him and oh, buried oh, yeah, him yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know. 60 but... miles down the crater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want rephrase mm-hmm. or or we still go to rephrase. The Re- oh, rephrase. Oh, okay. Yeah, rephrase, rephrase. Okay. okay. So uh, you go first. You okay, go yeah, first. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> ah, okay. Well, I want to check out this unknown energy signature. Whatever this thing down down it or whatever it is on the inside, it's it smells trouble. I mean, if this thing is as powerful as a nuclear reactor, it could level the whole city. For all we know. All right. You better, you better make you, you both better make make a good convincing lie to Zelda. Hey, she's your partner, not mine. And I've already extinguished my bag of tricks, so you can tell the handsome honey that you know I am a freelance, you know, freelance photographer in a tabloid, personally run by me. It doesn't have to be, you know, an actually active website. Jeez, can't you make a good old-fashioned lie? What happened to you? You used to be cool, cold-blooded assassin, and a top-notch liar. You ditched your sniper rifle. I groaned. I see sniper. That's what. Uh, <laughs> as soon as you say sniper rifle, I just groan and walk. I walk straight to uh, Zelda. <laughs> yeah, you better come along too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For story's uh, sake. Yeah, definitely. I just like simply. <clears throat> Sorry we took so long, you know. We're buddies and we've been catching up. Yeah. Eh, Zelda, yeah. like, I thought you two were, like, you know, doing something else at the back of the alley. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Detective, uh, I don't yeah, swing uh, I don't uh, swing uh, that uh, way. Uh, out of context, I somehow hear Michael laughing like a maniac somewhere. <laughs> yes. Detective, anyway, I don't, I don't uh, swing that way. And also... I believe you know you're my type the most strong, handsome, ah, independent ah, lady. Ah, 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 ah. She, you better get to know her first. Anyway, yeah, his story checks out. I vouch for him. He's running his own personal, uh, personal website, and trust and trust me, Sheesh, the stuff he has there is nuts. Hmm. Well, well, you vouch for him. That's good. Roll for persuasion with plus five bonus. Who, oh, me or him? Him. Oh, okay. 29, plus five, yeah, 21. 21. Okay. All right. And Delta and said, well, then, uh, well, since you vouch for him, since I actually need to write for the news, then go ahead uh, and head inside. At least the people will actually let you in. Uh, as a police officer, you can enter and bring anybody that you want. As long as it's visible and you don't use your force when you actually have to, Draco. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I sometimes just don't. I just don't trust people. Don't trust certain people. Um, <laughs> emphasis, on, uh, emphasis on uh on Walter. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, as soon as Chris... he, wait, wait, as soon as you say that, I'm like. It was, it was, uh, sorry, it was last year, and I will pay you back the 50 bucks. Jeez, would you let it go? I puked in the back of your car. I didn't ruin it, you know. Jeez, it's been like, what, six months? Would you let it go already? Nine months. 
to be exact. It's been nine months. Mm-hmm. Okay, now okay. we can go to the mm-hmm. jewelry store. So we go straight to to the jewelry store. Yeah. Okay, we'll head straight to the jewelry store. Okay, Draken and Walter, you see this man actually smoking outside. When he actually stares and just looks at both of you and he just ignores both of you and then, then you enter <laughs> the jewelry store. Okay. Uh yeah. once I'm inside, I'll roll I roll uh, per- uh perception to make sure I, I don't find a certain someone. Okay. Enter through this one, please. This door. Okay, this I'll, door. I roll first. Oh, I see him, alright. I see him all right. Hey, hey, for uh, context, he's yeah. doing his job. He's doing his job. He's not doing anything. I know. Eesh. I know. But I'm just going to keep it to my... I just... Uh, I just so, I just... I just noticed a certain someone and I lean over to Walter. Oh, great. Good two shoes. Wait, who are you talking about? Uh, hi. Okay, roll for perception, Walter and Draken with plus five. Uh, you roll. And, uh, you roll. and you also, Michael, roll perception with plus five. That's Oop. 22, tw- uh, 6, 7, 10, I got, seven. Yeah. 27. I got 23. I got 23. Okay. Got All right. The moment Walter and Draken walk through the door, uh, that's when the two of them then turn to see you, Michael, and then you, Michael, to actually face them. Let me roll for insight. Let me roll for insight. <laughs> I, I, I'm just too focused on my job. I'm just too focused on my job. I'll focus back on my job. They're not causing trouble. Let them be. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I just simply... Hey, like... crazy! Mm-hmm. I just simply... Crazy. Yay. I just simply um, lean over to him. Oh! I see what you mean. Uh, now, so, you think among these fancy things is something is so highly radioactive that none of these people are aware of, or do you think they're all playing dumb? Including <coughs> our lovely idiot over there. Trust me, I don't want to see him anywhere near me. But if he's missing, <sighs> if he's missing with, you know... With you know what, that means he's fully aware of what he's doing and he needs to be stopped. Legally or illegally. You are bound by, you know, the ethics of a cop to stop a crime. And if he's aware of it, you have to stop him and arrest him. By the way, I get... True. <laughs> by the way, I get full... Uh, I get dibs on first-hand interrogation photos and videos and, you know, for the website. I have to start this website. It will help to boost up my credentials as a press guy. As long as you can get your cover. I have to say, you guys really hate Michael? Ouch. No, I really hate him as as a character because of his Gritty Two Shoes uh, style. Uh, Mm -hmm. His Gritty Two Shoes niceness. Okay, one thing is, Michael was a Gritty Two Shoes. Uh And then somehow, when he changed into the Red Lantern, that's when things started to turn really, really... 720 brutal. degrees to brutal. Michael, brutal. 500 yeah. death, uh-huh. 500 countable death, and some uncountable. 500 is just the countable bodies that was recovered. There could be more mm. actually uh, during crisis. Uh, Herbert, I take out simply my Bluetooth earphone to contact Friday and tell her, uh, Friday, how far am I, am I from the object that imitating? They have weird energy signature. Give me the distance in Mount foot, please. Oh, shit, really. uh, maybe you should. Maybe you should change it because Stark already on Friday. Mm-hmm. You should actually change yours to maybe Wednesday or Saturday oh, or maybe. Sunday. No, 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 no. Jarvis, 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 actually. Jarvis yeah. is better. Monday, Monday. Okay. Monday is better because everybody hates Monday. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, nice, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yours is Monday because, oh, you're, because the AI... Your AI, your AI is called Monday because your AI is like, sure, sir, whatever you say, sir, uh, just for you, uh, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Craig, uh, what should you say? You're quite soft. Do you a said lot? At what now? Do you try to communicate in my? Uh, mm. Oh. Uh, yes, yes, yes. 
He said the quarter cross is actually trying to communicate with his computer system that was actually given to him by Spark. During the events of crisis, the old man Stark actually gave him access to his phone. Through phone, through the phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it connected to my phone, and yeah. Well, yeah, but phones don't work through lead. Hmm. Is is but, the whole place well, made of lead, actually? Uh, not the whole place, actually. Unless, unless Logan specifically said that he wants the whole place to be made of lead. If because he is he considered, you go sub level with his jewelry store, like where his good stuff is. Teddy, actually, I said, lead. Hmm. Yeah, you can't use X ray and stuff. Yeah, so, basically, in other way, in other words, yeah, the one Logan said is this is correct. You can't actually use if that, but if you're looking at jewelry that's 900 gram plus on the sub level, where the top level stuff is, there's no taking photos and sending a selfie. Uh, Craig, the currently you, uh, your jewelry shop is displaying... Okay. Uh, uh, so, sorry, uh... I'll put in a sense you think the MGM Grand, that's Floyd Mayweather, takes the jewelry shop. Your jewelry shop is currently showcasing your latest finding. That's why, uh, that's why there's a uh, quote-unquote radi radiation, but uh, in character, mine doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And also, and all, and and all, and also, and also, the computer system that was actually given to Walter Cross by the person that he actually couldn't save during the many, many, many session. Actually, that supercomputer can actually penetrate to this one. But if Walter Cross tried to call using his phone to that supercomputer, he cannot. But if, the, so, but if he was using the supercomputer from there to detect this anomaly, he could. So, in other words, in other words, yeah, because regardless, this is Spark technology, so he can actually go through whatever lead this thing is made of. So, the only thing that he cannot go through is, unless this building is made super deep underground, maybe just 100 feet down, then possibly no. But... He sees him holding the phone out yeah, but the phone, obviously, he can't call out. Yeah, he can't actually call out to the computer. Okay, but just to move things faster, because we, we, because we are dealing with real-life events here, and, and comic book events here, so let's not put real-life events and comic books together. So, But I'm just going to put it straight off that he cannot communicate from here on, because... Because he just can't contact his friend. Unless, of course, he... Okay. Because one thing is, the device... Because one thing is, Walter Croft need to spend a number of points on his equipment to actually able to communicate through certain materials or certain places. But because his char character level is still low and, and he would not have enough points to actually upgrade that, so Walter Cross actually have to read on the book part for equipments and so on to make sure that he actually his communicator can go through all the stuff. Uh, so okay, so okay, Walter Cross. The moment you actually try to call, the moment you actually try to communicate to Roach and to Monday, you realize that you're unable to actually get a your phone is unable to actually get through. There's no static. It's just nothing. Hmm. I just simply like uh, say either this place is made of materials that distorts communication phones or whatever is here is definitely signal disrupting my communicator. Are you having any luck with your radio? I lean, I lean over to my left side of the shoulder and just press my walkie talkie. Uh, hey Zelda, I'm just going to check in. Everything okay out there? You don't hear anything. It's quiet. Zelda, you reading me? You press you press your your walker to Zelda. You don't hear anything. You're static. Yeah, let's look over to to Walter. Yeah, you're right. Something ain't right. Well, it's either the stones. 
Mm-hmm. It's only that mag- it's either this magical floating stone over here that's actually disrupting the community because Roach did actually tell World Across that this is actually emitting a huge amount of radi- a huge amount of radiation, but it does not affect humans. I simply like tell Draken, let's check out that weird floating stone. Perhaps if we know its origin or what it's made of, maybe that thing is, you know, signal disrupting the whole thing. As I basically like walk quietly and stand right about here. And okay, so yeah. Walter does that. I'll go put, uh, walk around the jewelry store, admiring the stones, and just do my routine work as a police off as a police detective. So okay. I'm just gonna stay here. I'm not gonna do anything uh, as a of uh, the character, but just assume I'm walking around the M. Right. Okay, Michael. The moment you see Walter Cross walks here, Pat, your Ira looks at you and said. <clears throat> so, Michael, nobody is supposed to be close to this thing. What you want to do? I do my job. I walk towards mm-hmm. it. Excuse me, sir. Please move away from the stone. Until our founder has reached here, you are not allowed to get near to it. Uh, excuse me? I mean, I'm just standing here admiring that weird floating stone i mean sorry sir you're not allowed to be near until our founder has arrived at officiate the event i'm doing my job i lean closer to you here and say you do know you're guarding a potential nuclear disaster right let me roll for insight for that hold the cross roll for insight also okay 13. uh ah here we are insight Okay, Walter Cross, you know for a fact that it's not nice to actually make Michael angry mm-hmm. because he could actually just easily smash you to the nearest wall if he feels like it, if he's angry. So he's doing his job and his wife's way to walk away. But Michael, when Walter Cross actually tells you that that stone actually is a nu- some sort of like a nuclear reactor kind of thing, you know Walter Cross has been always crossing the line yep. you're not sure whether his facts is correct but this one i'm more towards that he said those hurtful words it still rings in his head he just do his job and kind of you know just just say maybe again as michael i say sir please move away until the event is officiated you are not allowed near it well be nice Nice seeing this down here. Anyway, I'll Please. see if I can buy something else. As I basically walk away to the guy who was smoking outside and say to him, Hey, uh, you, you got a smoke? I saw you smoking outside. I'm all out, unfortunately. You got any? As Walter walks away, I just say, Please enjoy the event. And I just head back to my post. The man that looks at you will process it. Huh. And who are you? Oh, my name is Cross. Freelance photographer and press. May I get to know your name, sir? A freelance photographer that doesn't have his own student. My name's Sean. Sean Mantak. Uh, wait, 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 uh, re- repeat the whole thing because you were a bit breaking up to me. Sean Magaki. Oh, okay. Sean Magaki. I make note of that and say, So, Mr. Magaki, what brings you here? I'm just here to see my competitors. Diamond. The one that he actually unearthed, of course. But, things that you're a reporter, perhaps you could actually report this event that his diamond will probably not as be good as mine. But I just want to see how this event continues out, hey? Well, I mean, aren't you all diamond giants or, you know, I know you guys compete to see who has the biggest stone, but aren't they all, you know, beautiful? 
Or, or uh, the saying goes, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And after you see this girl, actually, this girl actually said it out to you, Walter. Hey, that's what my grandmother said. I, yes. Then you know this, this beautiful girl walks over and said, You said the same thing that she said. I, I can, that I diamond. Can, really yeah. mm-hmm. hmm? I, what, 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 what? 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 Uh, depends okay. on it. Depends. Depends on your collection. Oh uh, no, Craig, you haven't arrived yet. You haven't. Your character hasn't arrived yet. Oh Still yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Your character's gonna arrive after Thanks. this. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, I wish it. Sorry. Were, I wish like his character arrived the moment I said that. It would have been the perfect thing, like for him to say. But yeah. Uh, continuing. I I turn to her and say, Oh, I did not know your grandmother was as wise as mine. Unless they were friends, and my name is Cross, freelance photographer and press, and you are, miss? My name's Lin, Lin and me. Ah, funny, you and my, you look just like my grandmother. I basically, like, have a bubble, heart, like, sh- uh, hair head and thinking her grandmother I look like her and trying to imagine a female version of me who's old wrinkly hair but still somehow maintain the same face and he's like Ugh. I'm pretty sure your grandmother you know did not look uh, like me so what brings you here no I'm here with my friend I mean my composer of course DeAndre DeAndre please introduce yourself to the kind reporter I'm just shaking his head. Pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure to meet you, too. You want cross? He speaks really fast for this man. Yeah. Wow. You speak really fast. I mean... I... Sorry, sorry, I, I, I tried to do this with him. I basically, like, uh, scratched my head. Okay. I'm just gonna put you as... Ah, I have a nickname for you. I'll call you The Flash. Because, you know, you talk fast. I wonder what else is fast about you. Anyway... So, what bring you uh, three fine people into here? I know the gentleman here next to me in white is here to check out his competition in the diamond industry. Boring conversation. You just move away. Huh. Rich people. Am I right? Uh, yeah, as this guy gets near to one display, I approach him and greet him. Hello, sir. How may I help you? Are you enjoying the event? I'll move yeah. to water sink first. Okay, mm-hmm. right, Walter and DeAndre? Yeah, British people do be like that. Mm-hmm. All, they, all they take was money out of this. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna assume you drank way too much coffee for you to talk this quickly. You better lay off the coffee, son. Caffeine can be really a danger to your health. I trust my own coffee on, 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 on something British. Hmm, okay. Uh, we're just uh, Herbert, we're just gonna do like side chit chatting here, so I can move out to the other scene. I don't want to take from other people's time. All right. Okay. Meanwhile, Logan. Yes, finally, Craig. Are you ready? Okay. You're, you are about to enter the scene. Okay, Craig. You drove your car by yourself, and when you arrive, you park side of the road using a Lambo and then when you head out you see a number of cops a number of personnel already there making sure that everything is perfect but you think to yourself perhaps nothing will actually happen for the night everything will be a-okay everything will be perfect everything will be right but oops it it got eaten by the tarmac oh no Okay, anyway, I don't want to press Ctrl Z. It's going to screw up my map. Okay. Anyway. This, yeah. is, this is in gaming term is known as a glitch. The car just fell through the, the fell through the ground. It's glitched. Yeah. Anyway, continue on. All right. As you head towards the door, you see a number of people taking photos of you, Logan. And people actually asking you questions, reporters that are the side of the fence of the barricade saying, so, Logan, tell us, how do you find the stone? Where do you find the stone? How do you buy your father? Where do you, are you buy your father and try it? 
I hear they all staying in the farm. It's like, are you going to be staying here all the time? Are you going to be taking over? Is, is, is the business empire is better than Bruce Wayne or better of Anthony Stark and anything else. You heard the name Bruce Wayne. You heard the name Anthony Stark. And the owner of Stark Industries, of course. But you're just a jewelry. But when you actually found that stone, things turn differently. That jewelry is so Logan seems to emit some sort of mystical energy when the people that actually unearth it actually told you that the stone had a glyph or an insignia when it was found in one of the tombs in Egypt. We were supposed to actually play this session, but we're going to be moving fast forward to nine months. So this auto forward, this actually is a success. And you brought the stone with you, Logan, back to Mega Knight City to actually make sure that it's the state within the compound of this jewelry shop. But when the people of the lands told you that that diamond actually came from a place known as Grill, you have never heard of such a place. But when you actually touch that diamond, the power that actually emits from it was actually quite immense. But as you enter the jewelry shop, you see the people inside that have already been waiting for you. And for the others that actually arrive, you notice the good looking playboy, Logan Striker, actually arriving at the shop at the jewelry shop and then looking at everyone. Wearing all elegant and sauce, wearing such beautiful attire just to represent who he is. Lin Min May was not impressed, though, when she actually looked at you, Logan. The other way you actually noticed this. But your jewelry shop is actually beautifully made. It's always been what you actually wanted. The safe beneath it has always been there. And it's actually well hidden behind the wall. And we could see all those with special hours would not be able to see. But the diamonds here has really been protected nicely. The pedestal itself. Is jolted with electricity that can knock literally anybody down. I mean, a normal person, of course, but not uh, not you or not others. So, Logan, when you actually arrive, you notice that Pat Didman, the man that was actually looking after the whole place, actually called, actually arrived and shook your hand and said, "Ah, welcome, Logan, and I do really appreciate of you coming. I've been working with your father for quite some time." And uh, for now that you've been taking over this place soon, and the other places around the world actually being your family name, I'll be feeling happy together with you, making sure that this stone that you actually had earth would be caught, would be safe in our hands. And uh, Logan, you can see that the people here, photographers, reporters, and even Another, but before Pat Didman could actually explain further, you notice another young person actually walked over and actually then shook your hand and introduced herself. My name is Jack Frost. I heard about your exploits and this diamond that you actually unearthed, Logan. He actually speaks to you in a nicely soft, well mannered voice. His white hair, short, his skinny features. You think to yourself, you could crush this man easily, but when you shook, but when he shook your hand, Notice that his, his hand seems to be quite cold, but maybe because of the temperature that's inside this shop, you actually old. And when Jim Foster came into the hand, he actually smiled and looks at you and said, So, Logan, do you find anything interesting about around this city? You, I heard that you're going to be staying here for quite some time. Of course, this stone here is going to be well displayed because of your... It's your exploits. Your father would be very, very proud, but too bad that he's not here. If your father was a really successful businessman, I hope that you, Logan, one day would be the one that would actually lead this entire idea through this downfall or raise it up and be the king of all the other diamond kings on this planet. Of course, John over there will be very unhappy to actually see that if you actually manage to defeat his empire, then it will be another different story. But Mr. Diamondback have some other things. 
And then Jack brought the walked away slowly. Okay, Rogan, you notice that the singer Lin Min Mei is there, escorted by her bodyguard. You see a particular man standing next to one of your jewelry, it seems to be like, like a reporter, and a police officer standing near the door looking at you actually, actually entered, most likely taking care of this place. Well, looking exactly looking, like him. <laughs> yes, exact, looking exactly like you, but different attire. Let's, uh, he could be a long lost brother. Hmm. You know, when, uh, when, when Craig gave me the photo, I was like, huh, okay, we have Draco, they have the same character image, and we have this guy that looks like the same. But then again, all Korean boy, boy bands look the same, eh? Yeah, right. And <laughs> yeah. okay, our generalization, which is fine. <laughs> yes. Okay, got you on. Okay, Logan, I hope. Okay, Craig, I hope your audio is okay because we're on recording. Okay, Logan, what do you want to do? Uh, Craig, Craig, you're there? No, it's okay. If Craig is not there, unless he's speaking, they're going to roleplay his character. Okay? Then I'm going to move forward to back. Right. Okay, Logan actually walked over towards the jewelry, and then slowly then turns to look at you, Michael, and then he said, You, over here. Yes, sir. Um, sir, are you perhaps... Uh, Logan? Actually, Logan is not that unknown to you, Michael. He's in the news everywhere. I'm world sexiest man, everything. But okay, it, just, just, just making sure, just making sure. But ever since the events of crisis, the father was the one that was actually looking into the business of the jewelry store. He was one of the first few that was actually ransacked by criminals. And... But thanks to other other beings, which did not actually reveal themselves, uh, his business, the jewelry business, was actually automatically given to the son, which is Logan. And based on his backstory, I have no idea who the parents are, honestly. No name, no mother's name, no parent's name. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, so this one I need to actually ask because... No point of me making the tent farm without a family name. Okay. Hey, when he actually asked you to actually come closer, he went over and then after that he put his farm on the pedestal and then you notice that the stone actually still floats, but you notice some sort of electrical energy that to actually disperse. And you notice mm-hmm. that this, this perhaps this ten thousand volt charge would be enough to stop a regular person in their tracks and actually try to steal this stone. And then he asked you to actually slowly carry the stone on your hand. Uh, I asked him, like, are you sure, sir? I just got high. Are you sure you're going to trust me with this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then All right. you... You're 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 the, I, you're the higher security, right, for the police? Yes, yes, yes I am. Ah, okay, okay. Then yeah, then it's good. Then it's perfect. Then let's uh, carry. Right. I just I just want you to stand I, there. I just want you to stand there and show to the others about and show to the others this this magnificent thing that I actually found earlier. All right, I did as as was told. I gently carry the diamond. While wearing the green lantern ring, uh, no one okay. was like, I don't care. Okay. While you actually wore the ring, then you lift up the stone, you let everybody see. You notice that Walter Cross is like slowly taking a video. You notice that Draken is unimpressed, but actually he seems to be quite worried. That's Draken for you. You know that, Michael. But mm-hmm. then uh, while lifting that up, you hear, but meanwhile, Draken, you heard static on your palm. Like, okay. I tried pressing the my walkie-talkie a few times. Okay. When you press the walkie-talkie, you heard the sounds of gunshots outside the establishment. The sound of explosion 
pretty loud. And then suddenly the moment, that's when the moment Michael actually lift up the stone, when you feel the wall, suddenly you felt as if you had a slight tingle behind your neck. And it said, mm-hmm. things like, that, like you put as if some sensors telling you to actually duck and telling everybody there in the establishment to actually drop to the floor. Okay, but I, Draken, Draken. I shout to everyone to get down on the floor. We have, uh, there's something going on outside. And I take out my, uh, my police, my, my police, uh, handgun and, and kick outside the window while, uh, close, while, while I'm, uh, leaning. Well, I'm laying my back to the wall. Okay. Why well, you lean your back to the wall? I and... also say, everyone down now. I uh I you know uh I quickly, uh, forcefully ducks uh Logan with the crystal. That is nearby. Okay. I will bring okay. Lynn to the back of the counter. Okay. Okay, DeAndre, you roll for perception with plus five. Wait, do I roll a perception as well since I'm standing in the front area where the door is? Yeah, the Andre actually because he's fast. Oh, okay. He actually hear that really quick and I quickly grab Lin and then move first fast towards the other end. And then Draken, then for the others. Roll four. Okay. Uh See, dodge, parry, body to darkness will. Okay, roll for dodge. Uh, do I get advantage since I'm close and I'm behind the wall? Yeah, you get advantage. Everybody actually just dropped to the floor. Okay. Nine. I got nine. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven plus X plus X plus N. Right. Dodge. Dodge result nine. Dodge result. Okay, Michael get blown off to the other side of the wall, hitting the wall hard. Okay, ah. and then after that, with the crystal, because I'm, I'm, I'm still holding the crystal. I'm still holding Log- the crystal. Logan, actually, oh. good push hard towards the wall, flew together with Michael because of the explosion, and then the wall actually exploded. Everybody actually flew and hit the wall. And then you see everybody around you, Draken. The walls in the other side suddenly just broke and then exploded. And yeah. everybody just went to the floor and just fell because of the hard impact. Okay. Uh, I checked I check my magazine to see if it's loaded with lethal rounds. Uh, it, I will just assume it is. Uh, loaded. Uh, aim at the explosion and quickly and re- try to respond to the to the walkie-talkie. All units, all units on in the vicinity. We have we have a, we have an explosion in, inside. I repeat, we have explosion inside. I need backup now. You hear that? You hear static? You hear gunshots outside? Okay, what do you do, Rekton? You stay inside here, outside. But before you can even head outside, you see a particular man and then suddenly jumps in. From the fire, and then started to actually like say, <laughs> "Well, well, well, look what I have here. Uh, you, the one with the crystal, head it over to me now, and everybody will still get hurt." Okay, I aim with my aim with my handgun. Aim for his head. Okay, roll good. And, and I squeeze the trigger. Uh, roll handgun. Alright, let me check. Okay, here is more offensive. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay, you hit. Okay, his 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 toughness is higher than your damage, so yeah. So you're, because your damage is range damage three plus ten, so it's thirteen. His toughness is higher than thirteen. So he'll ding, hit his head and he just slowly turns to you and he points his finger at you and said, You're gonna be next. I just quickly look at my gun, huh? Let's try again. 
and try try a few more shots. Uh, I'll just assume fail. I'll just I'll just accept as uh, fail three shots. So okay. one two three, then ding ding ding. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> right. Okay, Draken. Okay, you notice that this is name is Brian, and he is a metal human. Apparently, that you need to show how. But maybe you should have been at the rooftop like you always been to look at most of the people or the vicinity because you're a police detective. You can't leave Zelda Robbins to actually fend for herself. So you're not to show what is actually going on outside. But Michael, you are here together with Logan holding the stone. When you slowly pull yourself near this, you'll see this particular villain staring and looking at you. His mask actually looked at everyone. Everybody is actually still on the floor mourning and like still holding their head on the headache. Walter, you're still hiding here behind. And you notice that Draken actually tried to shoot this man with whatever that he had. And apparently this person is an impervious to bullets or maybe just small bullets you think to yourself. And the Andre. Lin Min Mei is with you. You not you cannot leave her here alone. So now I'm gonna be turning on the turn order tracker. Okay, roll for initiative. Alright. Uh, I since I haven't done anything with Draken's uh, sats, I'll just assume I'm using shadow. I'll just use the shadows. Uh, yeah, you have to use shadow. How did I'm you just using now? shadows. Uh, huh? Because I'm using Michael, not not as the lantern. I'm using oh, Michael. Oh, okay. I've... Oh, okay. That means your initiative is okay. okay Zero. Okay. Oh wait, you have two character sheets. Yeah. Everybody have two character sheets. sheets. I have one character sheet so far, which is the one that I have, but okay. But your, but your gadget here is fine. Everything yes. is your standard. Uh. Same with me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I haven't used copies, guy. Uh, into the into Drake's uh, public public form because I am not sure what to do with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I'm just going to use, just assume I'm going, I'm just going to assume that I'm using Shadow's uh, stats for this. Mm -hmm. Until I figure out what to do. Okay, okay. All right, no worries about that. Okay. Oh, you guys have so high, so high, very high, high. Oh, because you guys, you guys got bonus. Fair enough. I don't have bonus on initiative. I'm a fully offensive guy. <laughs> uh, I'm rolling for initiative, the guys outside. Oh, right. I set to DM. Yeah, either whisper to me, or if you want to whisper to me also, I should be able to see the, the phone. Yeah, don't worry, I just said to public. <coughs> yeah. Alright, let us begin. Okay, now. Ooh, man, that's fine. Okay, round one. Uh, does Craig have to roll for initiative as well? Nope, he can't transform. He has a secret identity. Okay. Okay, round one. The Andre. You can't wish your top day with Lin Min Mei because otherwise she will know who you are. So it is not a time for you to actually tell people that, hey, Lin Min Mei, I got a secret to tell you. I have Blue Rush. No, during episode zero, during session zero, no, you don't tell people who you are. So during session 10, maybe, yes. Oh no, bring issue 10, maybe, or issue 1. This, yeah, this plus, is still issue zero. Yeah, plus, don't forget, you got me, who is like the phone in my pocket, recording video, the whole thing. The scoop of the century, basically. <laughs> ah, yeah. shit. Ah, shit. Mm -hmm. Alright, is there any other... Uh, uh, Oh, where's, where's the bathroom or any other doors? Besides, there besides are other this doors. Room? There are other doors here behind here. Okay, there are other doors here. There are other doors here also. There right. are also other doors here. This one actually goes to the female bathroom, the one in the back. This one actually goes to the male bathroom. I was supposed to put some tags there for you actually get to know, but sometimes I feel it's not important. Let me me to safety first, and then you can think about something yeah. else. Toilets here and toilets here. Or I will drag uh, Lin back to, to the ladies' room. Okay, you drag her there, thinking that this is the best place to actually make her feel safe. There's no other back door, though. so the ladies' room is actually quite small. 
they put her there and after you hide her at the corner is there a is there a window over there or no yeah there's windows she's tiny enough she's skinny enough to actually crawl out with your assistance i will help her to crawl out okay right you have her to crawl out okay and roll for strength simple dc Okay. Right, 20. Okay. Lin Min, you help Lin Min Min. Lin Min Min actually looks scared. <coughs> and after that, you, you push her way up. And then she crawls her way out from the small window. It's, it's big enough for her, but not big enough for you. Wait, her. And after that. Uh, her. Mm hmm. Does she pull the whole Yamete don't look type of thing since she's wearing a skirt? Of course, she actually say don't look, but during this panic state of mind, she, she, doesn't probably don't, she doesn't care, but she actually trying to actually tell that DeAndre, DeAndre, how about you? I'll, 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 I'll run and seek help. No, I'll be fine. Go. No, go. Okay, you're not in the bathroom, you're alone. Okay, what do you do? But of course, uh, during this panic situation, the only people that can actually see you was actually Cindy. I'm going to be rolling for perception with minus five. Okay, Walter, roll for perception minus five. Okay, okay Drake, can roll for perception minus five. Explosion, okay. combat. Do notice that DeAndre went to the toilet. Okay, 23, 21. Nope, not, uh, nope, not high enough. I guess it will be a DT. Okay, 25. Need to be 25. Okay. Two of you don't know that DeAndre went to the toilet during this panic situation. When Orion actually jumped in, he quickly went to into the toilet, saved Lin Mimi and actually let Lin Mimi actually go through the window. And then DeAndre, you're now alone. Okay, what do you want to do? I will change to my super suit. Okay, you quickly. Okay, how do you change? You spin. Wonder Woman style. <laughs> describe, describe, describe your Tesla mission C, please. Thank you very much. I will simply do a backflip and it, and it, and, it, and the suit just is on. Oh, okay. You quickly do a backflip within that short 0 0.06 second. Let's see that again. Let's see blue rush transformation in 0 0.06 seconds. And then you quickly change to your character costume and then boom. And then that's it. Okay, Drake, how are you? Okay, I take aim at the at the uh, at the, uh, the other metal human. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay. hey, hey, you! You ain't supposed <gasps> to be here. Uh, what? No, whatever. If you're here, help. We gotta, we gotta stop this robbery now. Okay, you look. You don't have your equipment with you, Drake. You don't have your. Your, your, most of your, your equipment that can take down vigilantes and take back which can take down superhumans. You're just a regular cop. But if anything or any attack you try to do, you at least you're agile enough to avoid it. So do you roll intimidation? No. Uh, hold on. Do you intimidate him to attack you? You're coursing him, demoralizing uh, him. Um, no, yeah, I know what, persuasion. I don't think I'm not sure if it'll work or not. That's no. kinda low. That's kinda low actually. He slowly walks towards Michael. But Drake, you know Michael can change. Because not everybody here will, will be able to see Michael. The only way Michael can change is he needs to probably get punched in the face and hopefully Orion can slam him to the other side of the building. Or if he gets too angry. Now that is a false transformation. Anger, yeah, but the red letter, and, the red letter comes. And people will know that who you are. Yes. Is anyway, uh, nar narrative voice is okay. Narrative voice. Okay. Anyways, anyway, continue on. I'll continue. Uh, that's my action done. I'll shoot. I'll shoot at the, at the bad guy again. Still, it still flies off. Ping. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a piece. This time you don't fly off. You, this time you miss. You just miss. You just like, missed. Uh, uh, and, and my vision is getting slightly blurry from it, from the explosion. Oh, yes. And the smoke, too. Wait, okay, you... Michael. Wait, I thought, um, 
You skipped me, actually. I was right after... Oh, no, wait. Hmm? How come it's not, it's not descending properly? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Uh. We, we go to Walter first, and then move on to me. Eh? Oh, now I know why. Mm -hmm. Because Blue Rush... Uh... Was deleted, deleted. So, his, uh, so he did this armor class, uh, his AC, is, no, his, his initiative. Oh, it's, it's what was initiative? 22, 22, 22, right? Uh, 22. 26, uh, okay, 26, it was 26, all right. Right, um, okay, Blue Rush is... Wait, 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 need to roll for his initiative again. 14. Because need to change this to 26. Oh, okay, 26, okay. Yeah, I did. Alright, then go to Walter first. Okay, Walter, Rulas. Okay, Walter, then Draco already done his action. Okay, Walter, where do? Uh, if I were able to, sorry, if I were to move to, like, either this guy or this guy to, like, pull them in from their jackets, like, behind cover, I am able to do that, right? Yeah, you can. The whole for strength. Mm hmm I go to this guy first, since he's rich, so I'll roll for my strength to, like, pull him to the side. And it's a 16. I'll pull him, basically, behind this counter here. So you can, uh, so you can just drag him. And... Okay, yeah. And then... Yeah, you can just put him behind the counter, basically. I'll just okay, that's done. Yeah, yeah. And then, since I'm oh. basically behind the counter, I look into the meta human, and while my phone is still active, recording and whatnot, I just say, well, how did you, or where did you even come from? And are you even with him? Okay, you record mm -hmm. everything, but your, but your phone couldn't record properly because of the interference here. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, most of your recordings didn't even work, couldn't even work because of the electrical interference here. Your phone couldn't even record anything. It's just, it's, it just couldn't work at all. Yeah, you I thought that you were recording, yeah, I thought, I, you thought you were recording, but none of it actually record. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know that yet. You could have saved it until mm -hmm. I examined um, the video footage. Right. Okay, Michael, what you want to do? Uh, as I get back up, I look at everyone. What? Oh, my head. Who are you? I, I, pointed, uh, I pointed at this guy. You do not know who I am. I am Orion. Uh, who? Uh, you know what? You're not supposed to be here. Then I look at Logan. Is he, is he conscious? He's conscious by just standing there looking at Orion and then looking at you. Well, when Orion was busy talking, you notice two men walking out from within the fire itself, rushing in, wearing what seems to be some sort of SMG, full gear, and then rushing over towards you and then after that rushing towards Ryan and said and you hear them actually talking but you don't hear they're just looking at Orion without, without even speaking and then Orion actually just points at you and then points at Logan and then Orion then walks slowly towards you hand over the crystal and no. perhaps she will not get that no but is my green ring reacting to something, or is it just inactive? It's inactive. Your I... red is active. Your red is actually growing, but you're not wearing it. But you can't wear it because you can't. Ever, ever would know. Unless I get very angry. No, it you can always ang you can always get angry anytime. But unless you want people to know who you are, that's the thing. Uh, no. Uh, for this, I'm going to say no. You're... This is this doesn't belong to you. I still hold the diamond uh, tightly to me and then move uh, in front of uh, Logan in, to protect him. Okay. Put the diamond into. Night. 
and um, skip, 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 skip. All right, and then converse forward to you. You notice this is quite tall. If you're six feet, it's mostly seven or eight feet tall. I'm assuming, I'm assuming he's like seven, seven, six, seven, six, yes. seven, six. He actually grabs you. He actually grabs ah. and actually punches you. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, okay, result 28. He actually grabs you by the collar. He grabs <laughs> the stone easily. And then he slowly throws you to the wall. Okay, roll for your roll for your toughness. Toughness. Okay, nope. Oh nine, man, you're almost unconscious. That's twenty seven minus nine. And that's a lot of that's a lot of that's almost in that's almost encapsulated, no? You you're literally almost unconscious. Uh, as I got hit like that, I'm reminded what happened in in about in the scene where he got captured. This is similar, okay. but okay. I'll wait for my turn. I really want to rage out. You take out my calculator first. Okay. Eighteen. That's one, two, three. Well, there's three failures actually. Three failures. Another one. I think you're almost. I think you're unconscious. But you're there, you drop it, he grabs the crystal, then after that, then he grabs Logan by the neck. Boom. Then he actually just throws Logan to the wall again, easy. Uh, DM, I'll wait for my turn, I, I want to hear some song first. Yeah. Alright, okay, round two, Blue Rush, you enter the room quickly, within this top few seconds. Walter is actually busy carrying the people here. When you actually stop. Okay, Draco and Walter. Okay, you two actually notice the blue rush actually appeared at the jewelry store. But that was the time that Blue Rush roll for Dodge because you notice that Orion threw Logan to your general direction. You can grab him before he hits the wall, or you can avoid him. I'll try. I'll, I'll stress that I'll try to grab him. Okay, if you grab him, that means your dodge beats Orion's Orion's score. Okay, when you actually from Orion actually flew, you quickly grab Orion in mid air, and then slowly put him down. Please already use up your action though by grabbing him. Yeah, saving saving Logan before he can smash through the wall, being thrown by Orion. You know Orion is one of those metal human. He's strong. Orion is strong, but he's slow. I can move, right? You can move, but you can't. You can move and do free actions if you have. All right, I don't have any free actions. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay, you actually move there, and after that, you see the carnage around you. You see two people with guns right in front of you, and they are unable to shoot you yet because it's not your their turn. They are still there, moving. Okay, now it's Walter Croc. Okay, Walter, you notice that Logan actually got thrown by Orion. To your direction, but the blue rush quickly arrived and appeared and grabbed Logan while in mid air and put him down and quickly ran as fast as he could to the back of Orion. What do you do, Walter? I yell at Draken to pull this guy and get him behind the counter while I try and help Blue Rush by firing at Ugly over here at this minion, the one I'm pinging. Okay, so uh, as so as uh, Walter takes aim, I shot at him. You better cover my ass. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll attack that target target with my holdout pistol. And which I... one? This one? Yeah, no, 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 this guy. Okay, all right, go ahead. Because I've already seen bullet bounces of ugly over here, and knowing my pea shooter, it will highly you know just maybe piss him off even further so i'd rather take take this guy out in an attempt to you know 
dead or alive, preferably alive, for interrogation. So I'll attack him. Oh, <laughs> you missed. Yeah, I definitely miss. Uh, can I can I try again? Like fire at him again? Nope, you cannot. Oh, okay. Uh, extra effort, but you'll be ex exhausted. Yeah, you can use extra effort. Yeah, I forgot about that. Extra effort, but you'll be exhausted. Oh, okay, okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, you can you can move on to Dragon. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay, Drake, what do you do? Okay, I'm going to move to here first. And then I'll roll strength to carry this guy. Ah, too weak. But I want to move him to cover. Right. You move him easily. Drag him. But you stop your action for that. Yeah. Okay, then you move. And then Michael. You're now ahead, man. Minus two, minus five, and minus, minus two, minus five, minus two, eight, minus eight. Yeah. Okay, Michael, what do we do? Michael, please. Michael, are you there? Are you what? He's mu uh, he muted himself. I, uh, I get back oh, up. I, I said to myself, I have enough of this nuisance. I take up my red ring and wait. But as I wear it, I'm going to say the uh, red lanterns of with blood and rage, crimson red, red from corpse, so freshly dead, together with our hellish hate. We'll burn you all! That is your fate! Okay, Blue Rush, roll for perception. <laughs> okay, everyone roll for perception. No, only Blue Rush, because oh, Walter, and Walter, Walter and Draco knows that Michael is the Red Lantern, but Blue Rush have no idea. Okay, uh, so it, when uh, Michael transforms, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, <laughs> again. Okay. Blue Rush, you not you notice that that man, that security, actually recites some sort of word, and you notice a uh, strong red energy was forced through his leg all the way to his head, creating some sort of armor around his body, and then suddenly he somehow float and flew, and you realize that this person is actually the Red Lantern that 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 killed Professor Doom and not only that, destroyed almost half the city. All right. uh, can I still take my action? Of course. That's a free action. All right. I move here. Are they in a straight line? These two are, are they, in, are they in, in a straight line? Uh, in, in Mutants and Mastermind, there is no need for measurements because when you can run across and you can fly up to 80,000 miles. What's the reason of having squares? All right. So they are in a straight line. If that's so... Doesn't, doesn't, matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter whether in a straight line or not. You can make All them right. stand in a straight line. All right. Since they are in a straight line, I aim for this so I can hit both of them at the same time. I hit mm -hmm. this guy. I hit okay. him with my energy blast. Kill them all! I, as I see this... All the bad guys. Uh, with my right hand, I aim, I aim at those two. Burn in hell, deviants. I fire hey. a very a very angry rage field blast at them. Okay, you fire a red energy red field blast. What does it look like? Because you can construct things, but is it a face? Is it a middle uh, finger to control them or what? Simple enough, it's a old draconic head eating their souls. Okay, alright. Throwing them until their bones! <laughs> okay. All right, then there is a hit. Results of 18 is a hit. They're not in the eye. So we're going to be rolling for their toughness. Okay. Toughness DC 23 for both of them. Okay. Toughness, toughness, toughness. Once. Twice. Okay. One is four. One is minus 11. Okay, going to be rolling for this. 23 minus four is... 
20. Okay, this guy is minus 3 already. Minus 3, the target is staggered and I was going to run to the check against damage. Okay, staggered. Number 4 is if you hit him again later, the target is unconscious immediately. Okay, and the next one is this guy is minus 3. I'm going to put here minus 3. And then this one is 11. This one is minus 2. And then after you hit them straight to the wall, they hit the wall hard. Ah when you use your raging blood. And then after that, it's their turn, but because they have minus three, so they try to actually shoot at you, not the blue rush, because cause you're much more dangerous. Okay, gonna be attacking you, minus three. Then, shooting. Okay, nope, doesn't hit. And then next one. Oh, okay. Critical 20, 24, that's a hit. Okay, uh, that goes up by 1, so you actually... So now is DC 24. Okay, you got hit, you can roll for... Uh, you can roll for parry or dodge because it's a critical 20, but you can roll for your toughness. Toughness, uh, you need to beat a DC... You need to beat a DC 24. Uh, let me try. 14. Okay, 14. That's one. Okay, that's one degrees. Okay, not two degrees. This is important by one degrees. One degree of success is your toughness drops by minus one. Okay. And okay, and your the target has point of one bonus to put a resistance check against damage. So how you do it is you go to your character sheet and then you put the miscellaneous as minus one. Miscellaneous. Yeah. Toughness, yeah, yeah. Let me fight toughness. Minus toughness one. Minus one. Yeah. Alright, done. Done, done. Okay, done. Okay, and then first analysis is done. Uh, as a shoot that, I just, you know, have a, my rage engulfs me even more. Okay, and then Orion quickly charged at, at Blue Rush. Blue Rush, you notice the talking giant actually coming towards you. He tries to actually punch you, and he tried to close line, and then I punch. Okay. Roll for the roll for parry or dodge depends. I'm dodge. All right, dodge. <laughs> Holy crap! So you 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 easily dodge or right punch, but because of your thirty five, you can move as far as you can in any direction in this small little room. <laughs> uh, personal opinion, flank them. No, they, they can't flank. There's no flank rule in the game. Oh, there's no such thing as flank. I know, but like go around him and then <laughs> oh, yeah. strike on there. Meaning that blue rush is like going around. Yeah, civilians number priority. Yeah, blue rush is like trying to save. Okay, blue rush. Now it's your turn. Now it's round three. What do you do? I would like to multi attack for these three gentlemen. So for multi attack, all my attacks is minus three. Yes, minus or minus three. one for each target. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, roll as many multi attacks as possible. Alright, let's already apply the minus one modifier. First, second, third. First is miss, miss kit. <coughs> so the twenty uh, the twenty two should be going to the one of the min one of the minions. Yes. Whatever. Okay, you punch, you punch. You punch. But if because they're wearing thick armor, your punches is not penetrating to the armor. Da, 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 you punch. But the third one actually connects to punch him in the stomach. And you go, beef bamp up. You punch. Then uh, the damage isn't very high, so your DC is 14. I'm going to be rolling for this guy's toughness. I'm uh, going to be rolling for his dodge, for his parry first. Oh, it's bad. Parry have penalty, right? Uh, yeah. Penalty. Should yeah. For your quickness, okay. Nope. It's the miss. Okay, I'm gonna be rolling for toughness. Okay. And toughness is... Wow. Toughness 17, meeting your DC 14. No, it's not enough. You didn't manage to actually incapitate him. He's still standing. 
It's wearing because you wear wearing thick armor. To rush you think to yourself. Alright, I guess to yeah. move. Okay, then what across? You notice that Blue Rush actually punching these people. Mm-hmm. But because the armor that they're wearing, Blue Rush attack seems to be ineffective. Okay, I attempt to... Basically, he attacked this guy, right? Mm-hmm. I attempt to shoot at this guy as well, thinking that since he attacked him, his armor might be a bit dent from the punching. Nope. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. Result to hit doesn't hit doesn't mean so you can move though. No? You you can't do any action. You can move. Uh, no. I just kneel and you know just focus on my just focus on me firing since I cannot do anything and yeah that's it. You can move on. All right. Okay. okay. My turn. Uh. Okay. So eighteen. Okay. I'll roll my. Uh, as you can see just now, DM. I'm mm-hmm. going to do do that move for mm-hmm. to carry the guy, the next person. Mm-hmm. So I'll roll my strength to check. Okay. okay. Is it? So I move him to to this counter. Yeah, you move Jack Cross there. But you notice that Michael is now the Red Lantern. I think things should be okay from here on. But you're not too sure whether his power is enough to stop Orion. Though. Okay, I try to shot to him. Hey, make sure you keep. Keep at least one of these guys alive, for once. Okay. Uh, can I respond with a growl? That's a that's a shout. I don't think you're that angry. Uh, uh, no, this, this, uh, this, no, this is just me. Perception. No, this is anyway. uh, yeah. This is me letting my anger out. As I said, I'll uh, let my anger out. All right. Uh, what do I roll? Uh, inside or something? Oh, really? You actually heard what Draken actually said. You actually, like, shout. But in order for you to actually resist what he said and not kill all people, okay, yeah, you need... I, 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 did, yeah, I didn't meant kill, uh, kill all. I said uh, uh, resist, like, on, resist killing at least one. You need to rope a will to actually stop yourself from killing at least one. All right. I'll, I'll, wait. I'll roll for that on my turn before, before I do yeah. my action. All right, okay, Michael. Now it is your turn. Hey, running for wheel first. I can oh, fly. Nice. Okay, Early all right. That. Okay, fly. you actually heard what Draken said that you most likely won't kill them. Probably knock them unconscious. Only but one. This, only but one. this, but this super villain will be a very difficult task for you. Hmm. In that case, I flow. I fly right over here in a straight line again. I just fire my energy blast at them from behind. Okay. Yeah, that, wait, no, wrong. That was wrong. Yeah, it was this one. All right, that's better. Thirteen. Okay, thirteen is a hit. Okay, this is only three. Gonna be rolling for their top. Gonna be rolling for uh, this their top. I describe a freight train hitting them like a pulverizing meat. Hit them <laughs> to pulverize their meat. Right, dodge, dodge. Nine nine. Okay, that's a. Um, they both got hit by the freight train. Hey! Now gonna be rolling for their toughness. Toughness is D twenty three. Okay, rolling, rolling. Okay, uh, one degree. This guy got hit. Now it's minus three. They got no time to kill. And then this one is minus. This guy is actually minus four. This guy is now unconscious. Okay, that's done. Okay, nice. one of the most, one of the most dangerous is to shoot you at close range. Red Lantern, and he's gonna be rolling to hit. And then, okay, that's MG. Multi attack. Multi attack, multi attack, multi attack. Nope. You saw the guy using his energy and use all of it to shoot you. But it actually bounces off your red energy field. Uh, can, can I roll can, can I have a free intimidation roll? If you allow, mm, free intimidation probably no. Okay, just asking. I just I, in that case I just stare at him with my with my with my rage induced visor. Okay. Just stare at him. Right. Then, right. I'm gonna rush. He's gonna be moving from here. Here we go. 
เตอร์นี้ผมเองถึงเยอะครับฟลายตัวคลอฟไลน์บลูรัชเกมบลูรัชอยู่โนติสอะไรทำยังไงเนี่ยโนติสสี่แฟนไฟตุปันชิวเกนแอนด์เดนฮีฮิตฟอร์เกตี้ยูแกนจอร์จดิสจอร์จเวย์โอ้ยสุดยากเลยนี่ยูดอร์จได้ง่ายที่สุดยูนอตี้ได้ยากที่สุดที่จะกัดคุณแต่เขาลุกขึ้นมาแล้วกับดอกคริสตัลแล้วเขาชะตาออกมาที่ทางรถไฟที่ทางประตูแล้วเขาชะตาออกมาที่ทางประตูแล้วเขาชะตาออกมาที่ทางประตูแล้วเขาชะตาออกมาที่ทาง And you notice many, many more of his people suddenly start to come in from the door. Okay, so I took a peek. I said, "Oh God, damn it, war again!" Are you kidding me? Yes, this low-class henchman with high-tech armor. Yeah, that was round four. The raker, you think to yourself, what's going on? What's the fascination of this crystal blue rush? Think to yourself, yes, sure, it'll fetch them a lot of money in the market. But if that's the case, why only one crystal and not the others? What? what why not the other diamonds around this around the shop? Why only that particular one? Hey, blue rush. The most important thing that came to mind: more <laughs> more henchmen coming in. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yes. Hey, blue rush. What do you want to do? <laughs> is he uh, is he out now or is he about to leave? Going to out soon. The map, the map scene is going to change from here and there, here and there. Or I will probably chase after the big guy here. Mm -hmm. All right, we chase after the big guy. Okay, then you you probably switch map later on. And don't forget to attack. Yep, yeah. don't forget to attack. Yeah, I'll try one. Yeah, get few. I sorry, ah, uh, but I think you can either attack or you can try to steal steal the diamond back from him. You know what? Uh, I will yes. try to trip the guy. Why not? Try to trip the guy. All right. Try to trip. Okay, trip him. No Ooh, way, no man. Who man? When no you way, ran, no. when you ran, no rush. You ran as fast as you can. You wanted to trip to Orion, but Orion saw your leg. He quickly just kicks you away, and then you crash on the floor, sliding as fast as you can. It was actually a free attack for Orion, and when he actually kicks you, okay. Now you can only parry. You can't dodge. Parry it, alright. Yeah. Okay, you lose by one. Uh, but it is still okay. You need to roll for toughness. He hits you for thirty one. You got twenty nine. He is tough. He is your toughness. You need to beat a DC twenty seven. Nah, no bueno. Oh, okay. You drop by one minus one. Your toughness drops by minus one. All right. Okay. He actually kicks you. You slide on the floor. You you actually slide on the road. You only stop because of the car that was parked nearby. When he actually kicks you, this this already is actually quite strong. You're fast, but you don't have the massive punching power to take him down. You think to yourself, but my but Red Lantern is just too busy inside, and you know to show what way are the other heroes that actually saved the city during the crisis? Where are they? Where is Shadow? Where is the Werewolf? Where is the man that wears that I uh that plated armor? You think to yourself, where is K K Kaido Zero One? You think to yourself, where are all these people? But Walter Cross. You think to yourself, none of your your pea shooter, your your pea shooter together you also Draco can't take this 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 huge battle down. But for the rest of the smaller guys, yeah, you can. Uh huh. This guy is basically unconscious, is it? Yeah, unconscious. Okay, good. Uh, okay, yeah, I know this. I try to hit this guy. Okay, good. Okay, you hit. Okay, you're gonna be rolling for dodge. Dodge against the attack. 
Okay, dash, 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 15, nope, uh, dash, fail, then toughness, toughness, 15, nope, toughness pass, the damage can get through. Hmm, uh, I just kneel and, you know, tell Draken to, uh, I basically say this to him, hit this guy and try to get him alive, we need someone, or at least a couple of them to be interrogated. Uh, then I, then I shot, I shot back. Then you get get the other two out of here, you fucking asshole. This one. Yeah, they're too far. Let's get these assholes first. God damn it! Do your job. Uh, and I just groan. Uh. Hey, groan. Okay, Drake, now it's your turn. Okay, I think I shoot the guy that uh that uh Walter shot. Is it reading? There we go. Okay, there's a hit. I think your damage should be higher than ten. It should be at least eighteen. Yeah, but my my my, my base is at, my crit target's twenty. My base is my bonus is seven. So hmm. yeah, rolling ten. It should be thirteen. Thirteen should be eighteen. The DC for resistance should be eighteen. Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. I'm gonna be rolling for dots. Now, I really should recreate macros for my villains. Okay, dodge. Yeah. Fail. Toughness. Fail. Okay, eh, no. Toughness. Yeah, toughness also fail. This one. Okay, drop my one. Okay, minus one on me. Okay. Okay. Uh... You succeed. The thing hit them with the armor plates. Okay. I'm not gonna move, but uh, is there anything, anything else? Is it same as d and I can still have one more action or no? No, you can still move, though. No? Uh, no, I'm not you can, my spot. I'm you not can actually move. do another action, but you just exhaust yourself. Yeah, no, I'm not going to move from my spot. Okay, all right, Michael, what do you want to do? You know, there's more coming, more mercenaries coming. Who are you going to hit this time? This or this? Off. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Herb, can you use uh, energy burst? Because uh, it's a burst area damage. Energy burst. Burst area damage. Okay. As long as there's nobody here that that could just that could actually be injured by you. Uh, just these two. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do like since this one new uh, nearby to me. I'm just gonna use on both of them. Okay, energy burst should be control area. You can actually control the distance of your energy burst. Ooh. Okay, let's go. Right, let me roll first for to hit these two only. Mm -hmm. okay. Eleven. DC twenty-five. Okay, eleven. Okay. You notice you use your energy burst power. But they quickly resisted it. And then just block it with their weapons and your energy burst just didn't do anything to them. It was not enough. Okay, it was not enough. Uh, I can still move, right? Yeah, you can still move. Mm -hmm. Result 11 then... is too low against their, arm, against, their, against their armor class itself. Uh, in this case, okay, let me roll for... Wait, what are for morale? It's either I want to kill, destroy them all or follow Orion and kill him instead. Will. I like will. If I fail, I save them. If I pass, or I end. Uh, no, I'm staying here. In that case, I move towards here. I stand be I stay in front of these two. Alright, I'm done. Okay. And then after that, person with shoulders. Soldiers who actually got try to shoot you, Michael. Okay. Gonna be shooting with penalties. Okay, first one next to you on the top. Yeah, okay, SNG, multi attack. One, two, three. Uh, your your dodge is one your three. Dodge, your dodge AC is one three, is it? Yes. Okay, two hits. Okay, two hits. Then roll. Then roll for your toughness. Toughness DC nineteen. <laughs> Wait, do I roll one or two two times? 
Two times. Uh, okay. Uh, 18. Eh, no. 17 minus 1. Wait, is it minus 1 already? Oh, you already. You already. Okay, you already. It already minus 1. Okay. Well, it seems that there are bullets managed to actually penetrate your energy field and managed to actually injure you. And judging, but they don't injure you to the point of death, but managed to actually, because early on you were at the three degrees of failure. So now you're at the fourth degree of failure. You are in capital. You, you fell down in your fall uh, punch. That's a tough check, right? But I have this actually, uh, great endurance. Mm -hmm. Does it apply? Yeah, process bonus and check to avoid becoming fatigue, then check to hold your breath, avoid damage from surface contents, avoid damage from hot or cold environment, and to resist suffocation and drowning. See, da, 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 da. no, this doesn't apply. Because it doesn't say that whether you can resist damage. Okay. But you can resist hot and cold. Oh? So if you fight any cold or hot villains, maybe, then you can use this. Okay. Yeah, but for this one, you, know, you actually drop upon conscious. And Draken and Walter, you actually notice that Michael actually been taken down by gas stock in Spanish by a henchman. Mm -hmm. I just say to myself, oh, great. We're going to have to rescue this goody too, shoot now. Okay. But Blue Rush is not there to actually see the fight. And then. Get a bit of this guy. Okay. Now it's Orion's turn. Orion is actually outside, not only here. So they'll be moving this fight outside. Okay, Orion is actually on the floor. Hitting the car, all this car actually. Then, uh, okay, Ryan, you quickly pick up one of the rocks, the rubbles from the street, and then threw it at Blue Rush. Blue Rush, you actually notice that Ryan actually pick up some of the rubbles from the destruction and threw it at your general direction. And then, okay, throwing. Uh, this should be easy enough for you to dodge. Okay, rope or <laughs> Oh, okay. Wow, you also almost failed. All right. You quickly got up from your kneeling position, Blue Rush, and then you ran to safety, avoiding the stone. And you face... Orion again. Now it's actually around five. Okay, Blue Rush, it's your turn. All right, I will. Um, hmm. I think since I can move pretty far, I would like to run at the edge of this map and then run back and, and try to punch him. Right. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, you try to punch him. Toot, 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 toot. Nope. You hit him, but he didn't feel it. He just looks at you. <laughs> you call yourself Blue Runs. Uh, comrade, your punches are weak. Your punches are weak, comrade. Oh, yes. I hope. Oh, yes, you should roleplay as Orion soon after this, eh, comrade. Okay, all right. I'll let you yeah. roleplay for Orion after this. Okay, oh, Blue Rush. Oh, wow. I was assuming he was Spanish. He was, he was Hispanic at first. No. You say in Russian, that's like, okay, fine. Why mm -hmm. not? Yes. Okay, Blue Rush, your attack is nothing to him. What do you do? All right, now my action is done. I will probably... There's only three, there's only three people outside here, eh? Yeah, there's three people here, but they're not shooting at you. Any civilians yeah. injured? Civilians, but... civilians ran away, but the police here are actually fighting the three people that are actually shooting here. Alright, I'm good. I am turned. Alright. The police are actually busy fighting this tree. 
and whoever owns his car is now riddled with bullets. But now, going head into the room, and Walter Cross, what you do? You you hope you wish you could actually finish the upgrade that the old man Stark actually wanted to do in this base, but you never had the chance to actually finish it. You need more. You need more time. If you had the time to actually finish the prototype, you might have taken this fight to a higher level. Mm-hmm. I continue to attack this guy. And attempt to shooty shooty at him. Finally. Oh, you hit. Yeah, you hit. Okay. He's actually, let me check his minus. He's at minus one. Okay, gonna be rolling for his toughness. Well, toughness pass, actually, 19. That's quite high. And one plus one. Oh, I rolled 17. 17 plus one. Okay. Okay, nope, you're gonna do nothing. Uh, yeah, that's it. And I end my turn. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Draken. If you that? only had your equipment, you... And what? my sniper rifle. <laughs> but this place, this room is so... Oh, actually distorts communication. You can't communicate to June, you can't communicate to the Pada, to actually send Shadow over. But if you did that, People are going to be wondering, why is there a lone bike outside? Yeah. I'm just going to shoot anyway. Uh, after I swap my ammo to uh, more to standard rounds. Mm-hmm. Ah, damn it. I'm going to aim you for sh- this guy, but... You hit. You hit. The but DC is actually shocked. 18, though. The DC is actually 18. The toughness DC. You managed to hit him. Yeah. Okay, you pass. You hit. You managed to hit him. Ka-ting! But only at another minus one. You need to drop him. You need to actually drop him. But because if you guys are not healing, so it'll take some time. Okay. Now, Michael. Okay. The rule for getting back to consciousness, you need to roll for your fortitude. It's just like a... You just need to roll fortitude. Mm-hmm. But with okay. a minus four. Okay. Nope. He's unconscious. Uh, Herb, while you're in my skin, mm-hmm. can I try and tap into the rage emotional spectrum? On so... unconscious. No, uh, just, just, just my, just my soul and brain. Can I try to do that? That should be under your willpower, actually. But, uh, uh do it. Yeah, it can. But you already roll for fortitude, so just to get up, oh. you can roll for, you can, you can ignore this fortitude and you can roll for your will. Instead. Yeah, I'm gonna roll. But with minus fours. Okay. Okay, sixteen. No. I really tap into my anger, rage, and my need to kill the ones that are wearing the armor. I really want to pull their hearts out, eat their blood, and bathe in their own goddamn corpse. Sorry, anger. Okay. The mercenaries, you notice, Draken, when they start shooting at you, even though you're hiding behind cover. Okay, you're gonna be rolling for the multi attacks. Okay, SMGs. One, two, three. Okay, uh, behind cover, behind cover is minus two. So, okay, what's your what's your dodge armor class? <coughs> your dodge result. <coughs> Draken. Okay, yes. What's your dodge? Your dodge my result. Dodge. Okay, I'll roll my dodge. No, I mean, what's the result? The total result. A total result. Um, fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, I do suggest you just roll for it. Okay, thirty-three. No. Two more. Oh, two more. Okay. Pass, pass, pass. Yeah, because we're using multi attack, so you need to avoid this using a dodge. Right. Okay, pass, pass, pass. Okay. Okay. Roll three more times. Pass. Pass, pass. Okay, the last mercenary. Okay, roll. Pass, pass, pass. Fail. Okay, uh, toughness DC 19. Okay. Okay, you pass that. Okay. You notice. 
the glass, everything else break. You're actually protecting Jack Frost from beneath there. And you notice all three of these mercenaries are shooting in your direction. And then after that, they all they drag their friends with them while actually shooting. And then head out from the premises. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Orion and then looks at you, Blue Rush. And then, okay. Um, all right. Actually, I'm going to let you role play this. He is going to say to Blue Rush that it's been fun, my friend, but I have to leave this playground with my gift, of course. Okay. Role play. Uh, me or Ash? Ash, actually, because Ash won a role-play in Russian. Okay, okay. uh... Every little surprise, my friend. So sweet on you. Then he just runs, runs out, uh, runs to the cop, uh, cop helicopter. Uh, Blue, Blue Rush, uh, talks something very fast. Nobody knows what he was saying. <laughs> yes. actually, it sounds actually, like... Uh... Wait, 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 you don't run to the helicopter, man. You just casually walk because oh, yeah, you're because you're the bad guy. You yeah. just casually walk no, slow motion. No, 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 no. The helicopter will come with the with, with the rope, with padding rope, and he just grabs uh -huh. onto it. Yeah, exactly. They, as he flies away, say, those feet down here, my friend. Okay, um, Blue Rush, this helicopter actually have stats, so it's going to shoot at you with... Um, six multi, six uh, multi attack. Okay, one, two, three. Four. Okay, oh, I think you can dodge this easily. Okay, dodge six times. Six times, all right. Yeah. Pass, 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 pass. Okay. That is like <laughs> shooting at the floor you're standing on. It's like multi like burst. And then you see Orion then climb into the helicopter as your helicopter just, just tried to shoot you down. And then after he shoots his missile and then blows this car. Oh, man. No! That's my car. I mean, you could have blown this one or this one. Why mine? I mean, mine was an innocent car. Literally. Who asked you to, who asked you to park there? You should have parked further away. Uh, I never knew that there's going to be helicopters and explosions. <laughs> the fun. I mean, the fun. I would have parked it here, but now I was like lucky. Now I wish I would parked it in the middle. At least, hey, I can be reimbursed from the police. The hey. helicopter like ran off, and Blue Rush, you notice that Orion just like waves at you, and then you I'll notice. throw a rock. I guess it doesn't do anything. But I'll throw a rock. You throw a rock. It do pew. It hit, and that's about it. Okay, I will let you roll for the range for the rock. Let's roll D twenty. You know, to get an extra twenty, right? <laughs> Not this one. Okay, all right. Okay, if if, uh, if it was a twenty, then you, I think the rock might have hit the helicopter. It might crash nearby. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny as heck. Genius, man. Genius. <laughs> all right. Okay. Blue rush after the, the fight, and that you notice know, that the police. Try to reass reassess everything and then move on. You know, many of the bystanders actually already ran away. The building is actually on fire. The Lamborghini here is actually underneath the pavement because of the explosion. Let's, let's make it more realistic. Okay. Uh, okay. Herbert, uh, DM, I'm going to be inside uh, and. Uh... Try to help help up and whoever uh civilians are are injured. Uh, okay. Can I, I, drug can I my still character. over? I drug my character. Can out, still... but yeah. Can I still overkill oh. those thugs that that shot me down? I really want to see some blood, like badly. Okay. All right, uh, Walter okay. and Walter and Draken. There's not everybody else is actually unconscious except for you and others. But Michael is actually unconscious. So what do you want to do, with Michael? Before people actually found out that. He is Michael. So what are you going to do? Uh, We're not I'm, inside I, the shop. Can you put us back into the map? At least so I okay. can know. 
Uh, where is his body? Because I can see him outside unless okay. he... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Here he is. So, I walk up to him. And wait for... Okay. I I tap his uh, shoulder. Hey, we should get him to the, to the bathroom. Actually, you do that. Somebody going to stay here and play, you know, eyewitness account. Get him actually inside the vault or the women's bathroom and... I gotta assess the damage. No, you don't. You don't know. You don't know about the vault. The vault is hidden. Oh, okay. okay uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I said, "Well, yeah. you got any footage on him also transforming?" I'm good. Someone has to stay here. Remove the ring. Remove the ring. He goes back to Michael. I know, but I want to ask mm -hmm. him first about video evidence because he. I gotta go back and review the footage on my phone before I even know what the hell I even captured in the first place. For all I know, hey. I could have captured hey, nothing. Hey, 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 hey! I'm the police officer here. All right. They're going to find out, eventually. Yeah, and I expect a copy of all your work and recording for, you know, journalistic purposes, if you know what I mean. Somebody got to do it. You better work on it you. fast. You got to work on it fast. My partner might be coming in soon. Anyway. And just kneel over over um, Michael and pull and try to pull his ring out. Mm -hmm. I walk over to basically the this guy and check his vitals. And when I know he's unconscious... I simply, like, uh, basically call over the paramedics, like, all the police, if you can spawn them in, Herbert. Okay. You so call the police. I okay, break them. I take out the ring. Mm -hmm. And uh, once he transforms back, I quickly shove the ring into his pocket. Okay. Right, Michael, just move your character there. Remove this one. Put your character on the floor. Okay. Uh, let me right. just... Yeah. Here we go. Okay, you put the bucket. You put the ring back into his pocket. He change back to his normal Michael self. Yeah, and, no and then, and then, and then, I, and then I tap his cheek uh, across. You owe me. You owe me for this. Let's stand up. Stand up and just sigh in relief. Ah, uh, that felt better. Hmm. Then okay. you slap him on the cheek. He actually woke him up. Okay. Roll for fortitude. Plus two bonus. Alright. Fifteen. Okay. Alright. You slowly go back to You slowly open up your eyes back when you see Draco right in front of you. Uh, I can still scream in anger. Can still scream in anger. No, you can't because you're, you are only, you only scream in anger when you wear the ring. Alright. Yeah, you only rage, you only rage when you use the red lantern ring. Uh, I hate that was one heck of a first thing, freaking hell. <coughs> Civilian uh, first complain later. Would you mind both of you, you know, help Oh, shut up, Walter! Shut up! Uh, yeah, they, they look, back, look at Walter. Yeah, shut up, you asshole. Yeah, keep telling yourself that with your pea shooter. Whose who's idea was oh, it to sure. shoot at the, big, at the big ugly fellow with, you know, a skin... More armored than a tank. At least I wasn't shooting at him. Yeah, yeah, I keep talking. Jeez. Yeah. <coughs> Can I just uh, correct, correct my quote? Well, we gotta get get police statement soon. So get your ass up and then kick, then kick his uh, shin. Ah, ah, I'll stay with these two first. Until medic help comes, I'll give my statement, alright? Oh, yeah, yeah, what up? We are, we are whatever fucking glee two shoes. Then just walk, walk, uh, walk towards the the scene of the crime, which is where the crystal was. Okay, way over there, Zelda Robbins actually rush in, and you notice one of the personnel actually help walk across to actually get the people. Mm -hmm. And you see the others also coming to Michael, also to help the others, and then game. Okay. That Robin actually had over to you, Drake, and she said, That was Orion. What is he doing here? He's, he's, he's supposed to be on he's supposed to be in Metropolis, not on this city. I just I just chuckle chuckle nervously. <laughs> That's one hell of a first day. I never thought I'd see the action that fast. Hmm. Guy. Yeah. Usually Shadow will be around here during that ring event such as that, but I'm, I'm surprised that he wasn't. The correct oh, you know, question, maybe he's nocturnal. I interject between them. The correct question 
is what would a metropolis based villain want it with you know a fancy diamond an oversized diamond you don't think he's planning on you know proposing to his super villain wife hmm there'll be a good picture here but you're the blogger is that right you can actually write this up but uh, this is police business walter you should actually step back well and he hands her a card with his email and phone number Detective, I'll expect, you know, a copy of your report for my readers. Some of us, you know, gotta earn to, gotta earn some money from all of this. And if I were you, I'd start checking with the owner of the diamond to see why was he targeted in the first place. And why did they only wanted that specific diamond? The place is, you know, littered with diamonds and valuables, but they only seem to be interested in that one stone. I mean, I admit the size is maybe the issue, but yeah, could be something else behind it. If you excuse me, detective, and that's when he walks over, and as soon as he walks out, you just hear him yelling a word, "My fucking car!" And, and like you could say, just like stands there in disbelief of what happened. Okay, you quickly head out to actually see that your car is already burnt, upside down, part. But, Blue Rush, you quickly ran to the toilet and then quickly changed and head out again uh, in can your we roll perception. Uh, but I'll roll at a disadvantage because I was I'm focused on the uh, evidence. Yeah, everybody has to roll for perception with minus two. Okay. 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 Nope. Nope. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm trying to find perce my perception here. Give me a second. Oh, here we are. Twenty. Mine okay. Is, mine is eighteen. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. Uh, gonna be for blue rush actually. For blue rush, you should be rolling for acrobatics or just dexterity. Uh, no, not dexterity. Agility. Agility. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yes, sir. Oh, it beats water cross perception with the blue rush is just way too fast. You do feel a, a gust of wind when you actually stand in front of the door for the cross. The gust of wind was so fast. Mm -hmm. I just like yeah, it. but you don't see anything. Yeah, definitely. Oh man, if only you rolled a nineteen, I would have noticed it. But yeah, move on, move along, move along for me. Yes, but for now, blue rush identity is still hidden from you guys during the first session, as you guys do not know. Who is this mysterious number 27? And then, okay, Blue Rush, when you actually head out, the police actually like looks at you and said, Are you fine, sir? Are you okay? Are you injured anyway? I'm fine, fine. I gotta, I gotta find somebody. I gotta find someone. I'll call, I'll call Lin. Hey, you start calling Lin. Okay, when you start calling Lin, you notice that you actually pick up a phone and he said, DeAndre, are you okay? Are you fine? <laughs> The explosion, the sun, the gunshot, every, everything's done. I'm fine, where are you? Uh, I'm somewhere nearby, I'm actually... Uh, I'm somewhere near this apartment. Like, perhaps like... Uh, a, few, a few hundred meters away from, from the jewelry shop? Stay there, I'm coming. And I'll just leave and go there. And, go okay. there. and then you quickly rush, but... Before you actually rush out, one of the police actually said, so before you can actually leave, you need to actually give some sort of statement of what actually happened here. There's an explosion. I brought I brought a girl outside. She went back, and now now I'm now about to leave. That's why I know I stayed in the bathroom with her. <laughs> and Pat Dittman suddenly walks over to you, injured, burned, perhaps bruised, but not dead. And Pat said, "It's okay, officer. He's fine. He's here with a, with a celebrity. You, you you can actually let me go." Then the officer then move away. Okay, DeAndre, you can move on. Then you quickly rush out. Then you out. Okay, you quickly rush out. Walter, you're actually quite shocked to see your car burn. You notice that this man that people refer to as DeAndre actually rush out from the jewelry shop and to actually perhaps look for the young girl that he was actually here previously before. And then from here on, Draken, you and Zelda Robbins actually investigating the pedestal. And Zelda Robbins actually just said, hmm, there seems to be nothing 
I didn't kill. That means the stone. That was the thing that the guy was actually chasing. And he ran off with a helicopter. Wow. Whoever is funding Orion is perhaps very, very well off. Or probably some, or probably some well, some well off a PMC and wants like power or something. I don't know. Let the shrug. Uh, and I'll roll perception to see if there's any sign, any uh, shell casings. Okay, there's a lot of shell casings. A lot. Okay, no, well, still low. So I'll pick one up with uh, with a pen, with with, with my pen, and uh. A little investigation. Right. Mm. Okay. Well, I notice that, uh, so I look at the bo- the bottom of the shell casing. What does mm-hmm. it be? You look at the bottom of the shell casing? Nothing. It's empty. You think to yourself, nope, this is nothing that the forensic department in the police station could solve, but this is something that uh, Monday most likely could solve. You probably need to talk to Walter about this if the computer can really detect something. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, judging by its okay, uh, may I? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look at it and assume the size is should be forty five ACP or nine millimeter, because there's no there's no indication on on the back of the rim uh, on the back mm. of the casing. Mm-hmm. You're not too sure. You're not too sure. Okay. Judging with the size, it could be nine millimeter. Okay, so I put it back and and start helping helping with the with the indicators on the shell casings until the forensic guys arrive. Okay, you wait until the forensic guys arrive, or you actually investigate the shell casings and everything else on the pedestal. Okay, Michael, what do you do? You've been led by the police to out of the building and also Walter Cross and also Logan the owner of the shop being escorted uh, out of the police of the shop what do you want to do I I see this guy unconscious right I quickly help him up okay he help him up and then he saw he got up and I was like ah oh, what was that he also said calm down it um, it, apparently a super villain came here and robbed us I was <coughs> Ah, ah, I was hit pretty hard as well. <clears throat> well, it seems like this jewelry shop is actually burned to the ground. But nothing else was actually taken, except for the big floating stone. Mm. I I apologize to him. I apologize for everything. I did my best. I'm sorry if I hurt anyone. No, you actually did your job well. And Pat Pittman then looks to you and said, oh, I... Well, it seems that whatever was here destroyed the security camera in the shop. Some sort of magnetic blast or something. Oh. Um, I look down on my foot and then I look to pet, uh, to my employer. Am I fired? Since I feel oh. the attack. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, that's actually up to Logan over there. He's boss. I'm just the... Uh, I don't know. If he feels that it's, if he feels that you should stay, then you should stay. Otherwise, well, if you decide that you're not up to the job, then perhaps you should look for others out elsewhere. But it's not up for me to decide. Pat Dittman okay. told you. And then, after a while, after all the statement was taken by the police, Drake actually Drake and Zelda took the statement from everybody. In that was involved. Well, after that, Walter Cross took the bus back to his apartment and to his home base. And then, after a while, it was late at night. Draken and Zelda then drove back to the police precinct to actually to, 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 to put their reports. And then, Michael, you actually head back to your place. Okay. Where do you want to go back to your apartment? You head back to, to follow Walter. Or do you follow Drake? Do you go to Drake's hotel? Uh, who? Uh, who's? Uh, who's turn is it? Mike, I'm just uh, asking Michael because okay. uh, Drake. Okay, starting with you, Drake. After heading towards the police precinct, you put in all the evidence you actually can find from the forensics team, 
and then it is late at night already. What do you want to do? Okay, uh, I would I would assume that I already swiped uh one of the shell casings uh mm-hmm. in the in the area that mm-hmm. the police uh missed, and then uh decide to head over to uh meet with meet with Walter at at his at his place. So it's like depending on where he wants to meet. As Drake or as Drake or as Shadow. Uh, as Drake. Okay. All right. Okay, you head towards the base, the abandoned warehouse, and then you drove there with your bike. Okay, we are Michael. What do you want to do? Uh, is there a, okay, Michael? Now he's feel a bit. He feels a bit sad and incompetent because he he didn't do his job proper. So, is there any place for him to like you know buy something sweet? Yeah, there's a lot of places you can actually buy something sweet. Wait, can does the hotel have a sweet shop like a bakery or something? Well, everywhere actually have a bakery and so on. I'm just don't want to make a bakery place or a bakery building just for uh, people buying sweets. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, can I use the hotel to buy like small confectionery? Well, everywhere around the city, there's always convenience. So you can just stop anyway before you head towards the hotel or head towards the home base. Oh no, I'm not. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. Okay. Michael still is pissed off about, you know, Walter. Those words still rings his head. I own you. Hell nah, bruh. Hell nah. Don't do that to me. Please. Uh, I'll just buy, like, a chocolate bar, a drink, and then I head home. It has been a long day. Right, yeah, head back. Okay, alright. Yandri, you actually managed to catch up with Lynn. And then after that, she looks pretty scared. She looks a bit burnt, bruised. And then you drove her back towards her apartment. And then making sure that she's actually safe. This area of Night City has always been known for its slums and gangsters and parks. But it seems that it's been a pretty quiet night. Except for the event that happened previously. No matter what you did to Orion, you didn't even flinch from any of your attacks. But he also couldn't even land a single hit on you. So no matter what you do, it is a battle of fortitude after that. Who falls first due to fatigue? Uh, you, if mean, you, um, you mean attrition? A battle of attrition? Well, a battle of attrition or a battle of toughness doesn't really matter. But it will be the case of who actually stands the last. But after that, the other day, you head back to his apartment. When you head back, when you head towards your room, when you took out the keys, you see Michael heading towards the nearest lift and heading or trying to head towards his apartment, even Bruce. Okay. Right, Andre, you are now at your door. Michael actually heading towards the lift. This guy is not here. Where's the game? All right, DeAndre, what do you want to do? It is late at night. You see a bruise and bleeding Michael. Of course, the paramedics tried their best to actually heal him. But, of course, he just need to sleep this off, perhaps for the next few days. Walk up to him. I'll just ask him, you know? Mm-hmm. I just look at him in a very uh, semi-annoyed face. Yes. Up, up, I'll just uh, lift him. I'll just upper shoulder him and take him, take him to his apartment. You yeah, so take him to his apartment, and then okay, Michael, the two of you can actually help you. All right. Uh, towards my apartment, I ask him this: Why are you helping? I'm just your neighbor. That's um, uh, isn't that what neighbors do? We help each other. Uh, by the way, um. I'm, I'm not really sure what happened back there, but do you know who do you know who the red guy is? Uh, let me know for deception before I say anything. All right, go ahead. Roll for insight, please. Uh, okay, let me lie to you. Red guy, I ah <laughs> uh, that still that still stings. I was a, I was a bit dazed. What red guy? 
I don't, the only thing I remember was like guns. Oh, I see. It's funny though, because that guy appeared directly the moment you went over the counter. But anyway, uh, rest, rest up, man. Thank you. By the way, let me get your name. Name's DeAndre. DeAndre. Remind me of my old mentor. An old mechanic. I, I miss him. Name's Michael. That's all. I, that's all I'm willing to tell. Hope to see you in the future. Uh, see you See you See you sometime. Sometime, Michael. Have a good one. I just smile and wave him uh, goodbye. Then I enter my apartment and go to the chair and eat my chocolate and drink and drink my juice. All right. You do that. And after that, you're bruised. You're injured. You're tired. It's a late night. And for your grand DeAndre, you actually make as many food as you can. You're burning way too fast, and you ate as many, you drank as many. And luckily for your job, you can actually sustain your appetite, DeAndre. But after tonight, you think to yourself, this will not be the last time you'll see Orion. He'll return sooner or later. But you don't know when, you don't know how, but you'll be waiting when the time comes. And you sure, you know for a fact that the Red Lantern will also be there when the time comes. And you also think the same thing, Michael. You were not prepared. Orion actually had your surprise. You were already beaten. The Red Lantern ring, you need to spend some time for it to actually make you feel more that powerful. But you look at the green ring and you tell yourself, perhaps why, you to... Why didn't you activate? I... I... I'm just baffled why it, did, it didn't respond to my sense of wanting to protect. Yes. You think about that. Perhaps your willpower isn't strong yet. You're still fighting with yourself. With yourself. But you take a shower, you take a rest, you eat rain at night, and then you went to sleep. But now the final scene is the hidden warehouse. Okay. Draken, uh, you're okay. uh, you need to drag yourself, okay? Okay, so I drag myself because I want, I'm just dropping off uh, the evidence to Walter. Here, okay. In, here, he wanted this. It's uh, the only thing I can swipe hey, Walter, under, Walter would have under, been, under my Walter, partner's eyes. Walter would have already been inside. Yeah. You need to Bro. retina scan yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just busy stop. creating the Daily Bugle online page with the catchy title for its first pay for its first <laughs> issue. <laughs> yeah, uh, for the first issue is all the jewelries in the shop and only one diamond was stolen. Uh, what's the name of the villain, Herbert? Orion. Oh, Orion. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Walter Cross works for for Walter Cross is actually a reporter then. Yeah, he okay, basically so... created the Daily Bugle. Like he no, no, no. Daily no. oh, oh, hmm? Bugle already existed. So right now you're working as a reporter. That's your official job. Yeah, okay. Then what's <laughs> newspapers that have yet to be created? At least I can create one as my own. You can't because people will know that it's fake. So if you're a blogger, just be a blogger. But of course you need day jobs also for yourself. So if you're going to be a reporter, mm -hmm. that's all as a reporter. Ooh, okay, what if I wanted to be a blogger then? Yeah, then somebody need to actually pay the bills, but luckily this is a hidden warehouse. So Exactly you don't all have the bills to... all the bills has been prepaid and everything. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, uh basically okay. the blog is it just called uh What what newspaper names that you have not used from you're, you're... Mm -hmm. You'll think about it in the next few days until the next session. Okay, yeah. But well, the let's... first issue of the blog is all the jewelries in the shop and only one diamond was missing. Orion, is he the next crisis event? Stay tuned for more info and exclusive footage. And I just like, you know, elegantly write exactly what happened while trying to scour the recordings of the security camera outside before the accident and after to see if I can analyze what happens. And that's when you basically walk in on me doing. Mm, 
break the match so, walk in. So I slap I slap my fist my face closed fist to 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 what I assume is a is a door. Boom boom boom. The camera uh pans to me and I just op- open my arm arms and it's just like and it's like shake my head basically like, Bro, I'm here. What's the pan? No, you, you... You scan your eyes. Yeah, you scan, you scan your eyes. Actually, the, whole, for, 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 the whole system knows who you are. Yeah. So this, I just look at the camera, just that, just like that, and, and then just look at, look down. Uh, it just, it just, I'm impressed. Uh, I just scan my eye at it at, on on the scanner. Okay, how's the scan? And then you add in. Yeah. So I just, I just walk in, and then if I see any. Swinging doors, I just kick myself in. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. So, hey. so this one, I was like, boom. Yay. I'm here. Yeah, keep it down. I walk this. I talk with this table and just toss toss uh, one of the evidence I bag that uh, under under the nose of the police. Mm-hmm. Not from the police station, but from the crime scene. I was like, here, bullet. Here, shell casing. Unknown. Unknown dimensions and size, size and type, even grain too. Well, that's just that's just too AI to figure it out. I'm heading home. I just quickly, I just quickly, aren't you aren't uh, you staying for? Aren't you staying? You know, to be at least help me out with this. Plus, I need to. Uh, you know, I just created a blog for myself, so I need you to say a few words for the blog as you know an official source of some sort. Otherwise, my whole info will collapse as. He said, she said, theory. So, uh, I, the traffic mark, I said, not interested. Then I just quickly, I just walk, walk out to back to my bike and, uh, and head, and head back uh, to the hotel. Uh, Herbert? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, can I All roll right. technology to basically try to hack the server of the jewelry shop before, like to download the image for the whole thing from before? And after and during the robbery to see if I can spot anything of interest. Hmm, I don't think you can hack the security level that high. Uh even with this computer. The the one because the computer is already the because the camera has already been fried. The only event the on, because even if you manage to pass, because the because the owner of the, the jewelry shop already told you all that the, the cameras were fried. And let's say if there's a huge EM, a huge electromagnetic pulse that destroyed everything. Oh, that's okay. about it. I felt like I could download the before images and see when the when the whole thing happened and see if I can slow it down to, you know, do Batman-ish detective work of pinpointing no. where the... Your com- uh, the computer here is good, but not as Batman. Com- bat not, computer bad, not Batman good. Oh, yeah, okay. not Batman. Good. I'm pretty yeah. sure the computer has, like, you know, on this whole thing here, they have like. You in order in order for you to, to in order for you to unlock all those special nifty stuff, mm-hmm. read through the book, mm-hmm. read through HQ. Okay, so at least you know how to upgrade okay, how stuff we... like Draken okay. can upgrade. Okay, no, I'm not gonna explain to you now. I want you to read the book. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna explain to you in in word i just want you to read the book i already give you this in front of you given by old man stark but there are so many versions of stark tony stark anthony stark who the hell is anthony stark Mm -hmm. if i but taking over stark industries Uh, and this place was actually well hidden uh, this place was actually well mm -hmm. what oh no no i was gonna say um that i put the shell casing on the scanner to try and create a 3D images of it and have what's Google version of this wrong? Like what's the, uh, the heavily most used browser uh, name? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's called Google. It's called Google. <laughs> yeah. What? Google. 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 Uh, Google. Google. With a B. I basically Google, Google. like use the 3D generated picture. I have Google to show me any related images to that bullet to see if it has been shown in you know as part of public articles about uh you know like a brand new type of ammo or something first scour public access information before then trying to you know dive deep at stuff that only in available in black market ish and yeah attempt to basically track the bullets 
track the bullets, you find the distributor, and so on and so forth. That's some Modern Warfare 2 shit. Yeah, I actually, yeah, yeah. I actually thought, thought of it. I remembered, like, how do you find a terrorist? Easy. Trump, follow the bullet. Follow the bullet, you find the distributor, and from the distributor, it leads you to wherever you want. Too bad I cannot do mm-hmm. Scottish or British accent. I would have did a great Captain Price. No, American, American. American. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, but can I able to do that for the bullet? Yes, you can. But while you do that, Roach actually just puts his gun across and looks at you and said, hmm, all that for just a bullet. I thought you all would be dead. But luckily you all didn't. But you should really take your time to actually look into some of the old texts that was actually put here from Walter. You're good at it, so don't spend too much time on the bullet. Oh, definitely. I'm just gonna set up a software to look for the bullet while I scour this place is. Cause my pea shooter, thank god I never fired at the big at the big ugly over there. Otherwise all I did was, you know, piss him off. Cause mm. that's when I put my gun like in between me and him. You and I were gonna do some inventory check, because I don't think our regular pea shooters are even gonna do make a dent. We need a specialized ammo to combat the upcoming threats well i'm gonna let the computer scour the information on the bullet to find out its source first while you and i we're gonna do some thorough inventory of this place because i think this place hides more than it shows and the old man who gave me the card wasn't exactly i should have maybe saved him i now regret not saving him actually so up for a little inventory buddy old pal Mm, sure. While well, we wait for Kick Hider to actually return. Mm-hmm. In the meanwhile, start brewing some coffee and follow me to the locker room. And yeah. And that's when okay. you could say we're going to do like the thorough inventory. I'll talk to you after the recording about uh, this locker because I think the location is a bit odd. I would prefer it if it was here, actually. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. After you, after while well, you're actually busy with Roach, while waiting for Kader to return. Meanwhile, Drayton, as you write off, uh, you don't really need know. much sleep. And then back to the hotel. It's late. You don't. Tadashima and Rame is probably sleeping by now. Sleep, old man. Yeah. This old man so definitely just... is not sleeping. So I just hang hang uh, my coat, my uh, my finger behind me. Just, and just sigh. Uh, just sigh. Just, uh, damn. Russell Barnaby, that looks at you. Aren't you supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing? I just sigh, old man. I've been through. I know I've been through a lot lately, but this. Ugh, I never seen a guy, a guy that tough before. On himself, calls himself Ryan. Huh. What? A guy, a guy calls himself after after some Greek god? Seriously? I saw the news, Draken. This job might not be the job that you have to go against Ryan, but I know a particular person that could that the police couldn't. I walk past him. You're not talking about Shadow, are you? <laughs> Who do you think I was referring to, asshole? <laughs> I just sigh. You know, man, sometimes sometimes you entertain me. But right now, I think I'm going to need some rest. These bruises ain't going to heal themselves. And, and, and he looks at you. I ain't, I ain't, yeah. bad, I ain't bad, man. Just yeah, walk man, the kitchen and try and make another, another some uh, like dinner and head to rest. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Rest, rest, rest. I'm just going to put down on my small little note that what's been happening for the night when you guys don't do your regular, you know, patrol. nighttime patrol. So don't let it grow because there is a rule that if you don't do your regular routine as a superhero, uh, things will get tougher and tougher. Meaning that yeah. I get, uh, instead of hero points, I get villain points, which I can actually use to get the heroes. You don't okay. do that. Uh, or something uh, like that. Just give me best tips. 
Mutants and Mastermind is not your D and D. It's not your modern D twenty. Yeah. There is no time that, pauses. Um, yeah. Wait. I felt like where if this is the Arrow series, I considered like it's you know season one, the first half of the episodes. Does, um, does the Arrow does the Arrow sleep after he walks around as? Uh, Oliver Queen in daytime? Uh, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. No. Wait, 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 let me finish. No, like, um, as in we have yet to create our quote-unquote hero identity, and we still don't know how to, you know, do proper patrolling and whatnot. Meaning we're, like, you know, creating the system that, like, patrolling and whatnot. So we have yet uh, to do that, I would say. Uh, DM... You can do that after, like, since since we have a week. Well, during that downtime, after he after Michael is recovered, uh, let him go on patrol and to let out steam. He just kills, you know, kills certain people that gets him angry, mainly villains that gets him very angry. Criminals, mm. no um, criminals that kills. Some... And Some... impel and impel yeah, them yeah. on the pole on the. On, on, on the light pole, it's like, you know, like, like Vlad Tepe style. Like... Got... That's a mm. villain right there. Yeah. <laughs> With guts that's, going, that's, and guts that's, flowing that's, out, hanging in the wind. That's a, that's a villain there, you know? It's like, Red Lanterns only kills those that kills. So, if the, yeah. if you see a mugger, you don't kill a mugger. Okay. I just, I, I just, I just burned him, I just burned, burned his head. I just, you know, incapacitate him in a brutal way. Hmm, okay. In other words, the... Yes. Okay. But people like Draken yes. or probably Shadow people, or people, or people like Shadow are going to take you down because what you're doing is you're evil. So unless Sorry, of I'm... course, unless Ash doesn't really play his character as the crime Shadow. fighter or vigilante yeah. that good, and then, then then most likely that if you can do all the evil thing, but the Green Lantern, the Green Lantern ring will probably be like you know, no need to be activated. Just they're giving you as a tip. So you can actually do that. Or just build, build, beat them up to a pop, bloody, bloody pop. That's about it. Like what Batman mm. always do. Wreck their bow. So you're not fine. So you're not fine. You're not okay with killing, but you're fine with with head with uh, head trauma. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair, yeah. fair enough. I just build to a pop, but if they if they kill someone, black tapish style. Yes. If they kill, then it's different. You may need to read up on comics about the Red Lantern. So there are some people oh, that I do... did. I I I I I watched a lot of videos about it. That's why that's why I read. I had you know I had a, a quite a good time role playing him. But let's mm-hmm. end the game before I continue on rent, uh, yeah, speaking out my fanboyness. We shall continue this again uh, next week, and see how you guys will actually fare off. Because right now we are going to be reaching almost the end of the session. I actually wanted to end the session with Draken on the rooftop trying to chase out the criminals, but since he wants to rest, so we can actually end him here resting. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Can I go night for though? Because I'm like uh, minus one. I can still go, go on. Yeah, minus one is actually nothing. If you're too mm. fast, normal criminals to Blue Rush can be easily be taken down. So, Blue Rush, you actually do your scouting through the city. We will probably around your city block. Roll for investigation. I'm just resting so I can heal. So I can get removed the, but the penalty. And then do do my uh, quote-unquote hero work. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, Let's so see. Blue I'll Rush. Uh, on. Then we'll see. Uh, next day, we'll do a uh, hero work. Okay. I mean, yeah, if, 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 if the activity is not so strenuous, then yes, I would do end up doing hero work. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, well, you may need to use some of the equipments that Teruko and June actually give you, like mm-hmm. grappling hooks and, and also mm-hmm. all those bolas and all those things, like smoke bombs, grenades, EMP bombs, and all blah blah blah. So this you you probably have to have a ray utility belt with you if you follow the template that I gave you. Yeah, you would have actually have all those arsenals with you. Yeah, too bad right now all you have all I have is my my le- my somewhat lethal rounds, like my knife, uh sniper rifle and a handgun, that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, red hood. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, Blue Rush, after running around the city around your block with the investigation at thirteen, you don't hear the cries of people for help. 
maybe because it's actually after the events of Iron, some of the criminals decided to actually, whoa, let's rest for tonight. And since we're educating some of the superheroes, uh, we're going to be sitting this one out. And But you're also running around to see if you spot and see any unusual activities in the city or any helicopters around the city itself. When you run and you run and you run, you think there's okay, you stop, blue rush, to see if there's any source of helicopter. But where will they be landing? You know, to sure. You just have to wait until Orion actually appears again. Then only then you need to actually follow the helicopter where it goes. And for the others, after the night, after all the event, you all actually rested and then step. Next testing your wounds while Walter and Roach is actually investigating the bullets and where they come from during their selections night, drinking hot coffee while waiting for Kikaider, which is actually busy somewhere else in other parts of the city, fighting other mechas, which of course could be dealt with with people like Roach and Michael. And for people like people like Michael probably can take it down, but probably not for Walter. But Walter need to figure out who is this dark person that gave him this card and gave him this secret base that was actually built within the Baker's Key. So only time will tell in part two next week Saturday. Okay, thank you all for coming for the Mutants and Mastermind game and good night.